Hello. Well, good morning, stream. Good morning, stream, indeed. Our first match is going to be Drone versus uh, Drone Rush versus Ha Ha. No. Oh. Wonderful. Do I need to be on the EU server? Yes, we are going to be playing on the EU server. Wonderful. I will. I will head on over. Uh, do you have a link for me? A uh, lobby link? Yeah. Let's do it. Where should I? Where should I be at? Rushy Cheerio. Here we go. Welcome. Oh, someone wants to be my friend. It's me. I've always wanted a friend. Oh. <laughs> oh, toss me that plebs invite. I don't think I have a clan currently. Did you get kicked out of Loco clan? No, I left willingly uh, because of uh, Alpha X rules, but then Alpha X had more European members, so they booted me from that for the time being. I and see. Then not super active right now, but that's fine. Then I can blend in. I just want to be like my friends. <laughs> I, I think only a uh, an administrator can bring you into the plebs. I'm not entirely sure. Got it. Yeah. That's fair. I'll pretend. Yep. Just, just pretend. It's all good. It's all good. Now, I hope our participants are going to be coming in because I have not seen them yet. How's your day been, Rushy? It's been pretty good. Uh, this has been a rather productive day for me. Just trying to get stuff uh, put together from schoolwork from the week. And drank my coffee, got a whole bunch of other stuff done. And uh, I just finished downloading Borderlands 3. And that's going to be it's gonna be my little pleasure trip for the weekend. That is fantastic. It's so great to hear. How about you? I, I, I've been having a a great day as well you know woke up had my morning coffee and then now this tournament is great hello uh do you have like the stream link the stream link yes cowboy yeah. i will dm it to you oh, okay thanks and so okay i want to go there Wow, I'm the only one in the semi-finals. <laughs> Big oof. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. okay, so I see our participants on. Um, we're going to invite them. That's what we do. Looks like Drone Rush just went offline. Incredible. I do see him as a way on Discord, for what that's worth. Yes, you are correct. I've done it. I no longer have to pretend. All 
All right, let's get this thing underway. Um, let's see if we have our people in the party. Mr. Cobble, you will be playing against Ha. Okay. Did you post a stream link somewhere? Oh. I did. Here, let me, let me. Uh, Maybe I just haven't seen it. Let me send it to you. Turns out I was breaking Beautiful. rules. Mr. Cobble, do you happen to be with us? I like how the deep mind opt-in is only available on EU. Yes. What, what do you? Uh, what, what did you think about that? Uh, deep mind testing. I, I never got a chance to play against deep mind. So I usually don't ladder on EU. I play on NA. Yeah, and and apparently Loka went up against uh, against Alpha Star as well, which is a uh, interesting. It was an interesting game, to say the least. It's not every day you get to say that you have won against one of the most uh, sophisticated AI systems on the market. Yeah, really says something. Maybe the 11 head is actually uh, better than we think. Yeah. It's big brain. <laughs> okay. All right. I think everybody is here that we need. Oh, here it is. Okay. Drone rush. I suppose we will switch back. This is like the third reiteration I had to make. Okay then. So it is going to be Drone Rush versus Haha. -ha. Hello? Hello there, Mr. Drone Rush. Hi. Sorry, I'm late. No problem. Um, so we're going to have you coming into the first game, and Rushy and I will cast it. Yikes. Uh, uh, what race am I actually playing? Uh, you're going to be playing your weakest race, I think. 
Okay. Let's start. Are you making the map? I am, yes. Mr. Fox. Drone Rush, I see you, buddy. All right, let's do this. Is the stream running okay, Mr. Gabe? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this is working at all. Okay, let's do this. All right, thank you, Darth Gabe. The stream looks to be okay. All right, once Mr. Fox comes in, we will start this match. All right, um, Mr. Cobble, come on in. All right. So the first match we have is Drone Verse versus Ha Ha. You can also look at the bracket by typing exclamation point bracket inside of the chat. I guess I'll just leave the chat this game and then yes. come back. Yes, probably a good idea, yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, who's not readying up? We need one more person to ready up. I think this is the problem with too many people. Oh, there we go. I suppose we can. All right. Pick your aces. Are you guys ready? Uh, the handicap for you is going to be Terran. Um, Unless you want to give yourself a... Oh, where's the wall? What's the wall? The one I got in the wall. That, that wall is way too big. Actually, my stream is not coming through. <laughs> oh, yeah, now it is. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's go. Oh, oh why did you I see? Why did you let this early music? Huh? All right, we're right into game number one here. Is this a best of three, best of five, best of one? Just the best of one. Best of one. For All right. For brevity's sake. So you can go ahead and do the introductions, and we'll we'll get it underway. Absolutely. So we've got a off race matchup here between uh, two of our players. I'll be interested to see uh, where Drone Rush decides to take this because of his placement, but I'm, I'm curious. I know Drone Rush is pretty proficient with all three races, typically plays Zerg. He's a pretty good Terran player as well. We'll have to see if his opponent can give him a good run for his money. 
Indeed, Terran may be his weakest race, but he is a very good StarCraft player in general, and that can come in more helpful than you know. Absolutely. Uh, one thing that I will need to do is I'll need to make sure that I follow you. Uh, let's see. Are you number two? Nope, you are probably number three. Three. Ah, there we go. All right. Here we go. Spawning in the top left-hand corner of Ephemeron. It's our red Terran player. Give it up for Drone Rush. And the bottom right, our blue Protoss player, we have Haha. -ha. So again, just to make, uh, to make uh, an observation, uh, Drone Rush is playing his off race. I'm not sure about Haha. -ha. Is Haha -ha always also playing an off race? I think Haha -ha is maining Protoss and he's quite good at it as well. All right. So Haha -ha coming in with a platinum banner, which is not necessarily a bad thing in the top 50% of uh, players on the StarCraft II ladder. Drone Rush, pretty s square in the Master 1 territory. I think he's taken uh, Grandmaster a couple of times on uh north american server as a zerg player so a lot of that game knowledge and understanding of matchups will come into play for him as this probe comes into the main base of drone rush there's a little bit of harassment although instead of attacking the worker he is attacking the barracks which is a little less effective and the probing scout the scouting probe he just dies just dead i Riff. love i love that scv remastered skin it Really cool. So we're going to see a uh, barracks stick out go across the map. He's going to see the second base of Haha -ha go down. And just a pretty standard opening going into uh, uh, Cybercore. Uh, where he decides to go from there will be uh, a mystery to us for now. But looks like uh, Dronos is going to get the block on the second uh extractor so uh that's gonna delay uh haha's -ha gas for just a little bit that is really annoying reaper's gonna come across the map and do a little bit of harassment and there isn't any uh units out yet for haha -ha, so he's gonna have to uh handle a little bit of micro as this reaper does come in to the natural one probe does start getting targeted down is there any units in production? No, because Haha -ha is supply blocks. So this Reaper is going to be able to free up a little bit of supply for him and do him a favor. Probably do get pulled off the line and try to uh, dance with the Reaper, but the Reaper is just going to have a little bit too much mobility. Drone Rush having some really good control. Does pick off a couple of workers here, and uh, more will come to follow. The probes get an interesting surround on him. Um, this Reaper has already gotten four kills as the stalker comes out uh, and we'll be able to ward this reaper away oh but he is going to get the reaper up and out so that reaper is going to heal up some health and try and get some more kills five kills so far for the first unit across the map and drone rush is just continuing to double down behind it going into some marine production throwing down a bunker just in case haha -ha decides to push back across the map Warp I think Drone Rush is doing a good job of uh, kind of respecting his opponent. I mean, dropping that bunker, playing a little bit more defensively. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. There's a robotics facility that's being dropped, so uh, it looks like we're probably going to be seeing, uh, well, robotics facility units, war prisons, immortals, and whatnot. Engineering Bay goes down for Drone Rush. He's going to transition probably into getting a plus one upgrade. One Viking coming out as well is going to try and take command of the air. Although, I'm not sure that the Viking is going to be as useful here in a, a TVP as it would be in, say, a TVZ where he could go and send it across the map and uh, snipe out some overlords. More stalkers in production while the Reaper does try to get a little more scouting information and harassment in the main base. Currently just attacking that extractor, but it is going to leap up and away. But not before it tries to get a little more harassment in. Those stalkers are going to be able to pick that off. And an observer 
on the way. So, uh, haha, wanting to make sure that he doesn't have any surprises coming his direction. He's going to get that out, probably move it across the map to see what Drone Rush is up to. There's a third command center on the way for Drone Rush. Looks like he's feeling confident enough to expand and ex um, add on to the might of the Terran Dominion Army. Uh, he's got siege tanks up here. I, I think uh, Drone Rush is in is in a pretty good place. Yeah, Drone Rush is playing incredibly passive and, uh, and incredibly uh, defensive. So he's got the Viking on the top right hand corner of his base to protect against any warp prism drops or harassment. And uh, I I I think that's okay. That's that's going to be fine. It'll be interesting to see what Drone Rush can accomplish here moving across the map. He is going to send two of these Marines out to do just a little bit of scouting, see what he can find. But right now, I mean, both players are kind of playing in the same vein. Haha -ha is back at his base. He is getting four gateways and moving across the map with some scouting information. So Haha -ha is going to probably see this and gear up for a little bit of a timing. Um, but he doesn't have a whole lot to back it up. Uh, Templar Archives going down as well. So he is going to want to move into... Archon and High Templar production. So I, I think we're starting to see ourselves ramp up into the mid game. Yeah, and, and um, with those mules coming down, Drone Rush's production is off the hook. He's getting medevacs, he's getting tanks and and, and uh, marines, and it this is a uh, this is really going to put him in a good position when Stimpak and his and his uh, armor grades armor upgrades finish. Um, this third base could really be under fire. Marine does scout the third base location of Haha, -Ha, so that does kind of set Drone Rush a little bit behind economically. A scan goes down at the front base, and he sees the bulk of the Protoss army starting to form, so Drone Rush is going to need to respond to that, but he's already ahead on army, 41 to 28 army supply for both players, respectively, and I wonder if Drone Rush could be a little more aggressive with the economical... Uh, side of things he's down 10 workers and mules are good mules will help even that up just a little bit but uh he doesn't want to let that go too long unchecked otherwise haha -ha is going to explode economy wise against the terran but here comes a drop here uh drop contains the tanks and eight marines this could be a sizable force here the Protoss army is stuck out in the front. Oh, it looks like he's gearing up to push out, but um, this drop will have to cancel that. Both armies. Drone Rush also has. Yeah, Drone Rush also has that uh, little army coming across the side. He is going to see this, and I think he's immediately going to take those two drops by the base and move in. Oh, but he's not sure that that drop does now finally go into the main base, and this is going to get a lot of damage done. Now, if only Drone Rush can hold on and maybe his drop attack will do enough damage to severely um, cripple Haha. Uh -huh. um, but it looks like he is turning back with the Mass Recall and this drop will most likely be cleaned up. Oh, but it actually didn't grab a majority of that army. There's a lot of key units that got sent back. So this is actually going to do a little more damage than Haha -ha had hoped for. But Ha ah, pulled his whole army back. He's currently setting up army supply-wise. I think he should have just pushed into Drone Rush. Drone Rush really doesn't have a whole lot back here at the base. A handful of Marines is not going to be enough to stop the onslaught of this uh, large uh, Protoss army. Those Archons would deal a lot of splash damage to Marines. Absolutely. And now Drone Rush, with the worker advantage that he gained with his mules, he's now going to rebuild that Terran army and... Um, and that opportunity that Haha -Ha could have taken just slips right, right away. Still a pretty close game. 111 to 109 supply. And it doesn't have a clear uh, advantage towards one player or the other. But I do like Haha's -Ha army composition going with lots of splash damage. That's going to be really good against these uh, largely bio-contained uh, forces. But we're starting to get a larger medevac count that's going to help as well. But here comes a good engagement here. Tanks aren't allowed to siege up, so the stim is not going to be as effective as they have to try and kite against all of these zealots. And Drone Rush is going to be forced to pull back. That was a great engagement here. That's going to force Drone Rush all the way back to his base. He's going to have to regroup. Excellent. But there's a drop going in here, uh, killing a couple workers here and there. Looks like it'll be taken care of with a simple warp in. 
Dronos is going to have to be careful in the center of the map. He does need to pull his army back. He is not going to be able to handle this surround. Those Archons doing a lot of damage here with the Splash. And those are medivacs are going to be forced to pick up and fly away. But now the front of Drone Rush's base is vulnerable. These tanks are going to need to siege in time. And they just get things up. But I'm afraid that this is going to be too much to handle. The drop at the main base of Haha -Ha has been completely neutralized. And I don't think Drone Rush has anything to deal with this large force coming in. Now, Marauders and Marines coming in through the back, and they do take care of those big, beefy Protoss units, but these Zealots are just slicing and dicing and taking care of that second base mineral line, which is crucial to the economy of Drone Rush. Yeah, I wish those Zealots would have been able to defend the backside of the Immortals and Archons, because had they not been all picked off by those uh, small reinforcing forces, of Drone Rush, uh, I, I think we'd be seeing GG here, but this is still pretty devastating damage as these Zealots are going to be allowed to go unchecked here for a large amount of time. It's going to take a lot of depots away from Drone Rush. And Haha -Ha has gained a massive economical lead. Um, it's up to Drone Rush to decide how he wants to pull back into this game. If he wants to transition or slowly make his way back up. He can't play from behind. So Haha -ha feels really comfortable with his army composition as it sits right now. But this is actually going to be a big moment for Drone Rush. This is kind of an all-in moment. He's down 16 workers, but he's up almost 40 army supply. Haha -ha needs to be really careful that he doesn't sit too far back and let Drone Rush push in and get the best of him. He does have a lot of shield batteries sitting at his third base expansion. So if he can get his army to rotate over, I think that he will be okay. But his army is still sitting in front of the natural. This could actually be some really uh, strong damage from Dronos that could really get him back into this game. Now, Rushi, how much damage does he need to do in order to kind of even, even out and stabilize the game again? So I think right now, if he can take out this worker line, I mean, he'll even up the worker count. But uh, I, I don't think he can throw away this army. He has to be really careful how he handles this. He goes right after the Nexus, and that's going to be great damage. But I think he needs to do a little bit more. He does need to get out with this. He can't support himself off of a counter push without this army a couple of tanks and marauders are nice but it's not going to be enough against six archons but the base is pretty good it is going to force haha -ha into build, rebuilding his fourth base all the way over on the left side of the map but those probes are just going to relocate to a new third base location it's ha already halfway completed this could be a really good ramp to hold for drone rush he is up in the army supply, but I don't think all of his army is here. But this army is going to push up the ramp here. He does need to mobilize his forces. Stim finally goes down, but the Archons were allowed to approach a little bit too far. He is going to have to fly away and get away with this army. Drone rush in kind of a, a tricky position here. It looks like he's going to be able to fly away, but this Protoss army is now on the prowl. Let's see if Haha -Ha wants to commit and take this third base out of the picture. I think he's absolutely going to get this uh, taken care of here. Basically going to be forced to lift off here, but those Archons could continue shooting up if they want to, but they're going to go right after those workers. That entire worker line is going to be demolished. Meanwhile, tanks are allowed to push forward and uh, get the bulk of these forces pushed off the third base. The base will survive, but unfortunately all the workers involved with it will not. The rest of this is going to get cleaned up. Warp Prism is going to try and grab uh, what it can and fly away. The fourth base is complete. Meanwhile, haha, -ha, working to try and saturate it. Both players are still kind of evened out here. Jarnus is able to uh, make up the difference of 16 workers and mules. But he can't keep doing that forever. He really needs to secure uh, a little bit more solid push here to keep himself in this game as his main is beginning to dry out. And the Protoss player is on an insane absurd amount of bases drone rush really needs to put the pressure on if he wants to come in two liberators well and i like go oh, go ahead yep two liberators are heading across the map and we'll, we'll spot this what is it the sixth base already let's see if he can pick off a mineral line or two uh i don't think he's even gonna worry about this i think he wants to go for a little bit more damage four probes is not quite worth it but 16 probes that'd be a little bit more up his alley he's definitely indecisive ah he's gonna divide and conquer 
Why get 16 probes when I can get 26 probes? And the Liberators are going to be forced to go to work here. The army's only now responding. It will eventually clean up uh, these Liberators. But uh, I, I worry for our Protoss player here. He's got the bases, sure, which is great. But right now he doesn't have the production to match it. He's only sitting at 138 supply, and that's 10 below his opponent, who has one less base than him. But he does have the army strength, and he is going to move across to try and do something with it. Scan goes down. He's Droner sees the urgency of, with which this is going to happen. It's all going to be lumped into this. Archons move forward and wreak a lot of havoc. All these tanks are going to go down along with the Liberators, and this bio is not going to have anything to support it. Nice little surround, though, is going to deal a little bit of damage and kind of force haha -ha, all the way into the base to deal some lethal damage a little bit of micro stutter stepping back but there's just going to be enough archons to continue wreaking havoc here but i think drone rush is going to be able to clean this up with reinforcements but not before he potentially wor loses more workers that was a lot of archons rushy and i was really scared for drone rush there if he couldn't hold on looks like he's pulling the workers to finish off that one immortal but here we are back in the cycle where they rebuild their army and throw them at each other. Uh, one of them really needs to get a leg up in this game if they want to secure the victory. Well, they keep seeing that Drone Rush is uh, adding on more and more of his uh, mech upgrades. Currently researching plus three uh, mech upgrade, uh, mech attack. And I would almost love to see him switch into a more mech-based composition. I mean, tossing in some Thors, tossing in some Cyclones. Cyclones could actually be really effective against the Immortal composition that HaHa -Ha keeps uh, kind of doubling down into. Um, I'm also not sure that HaHa -Ha has Storm researched yet. Uh, no, I don't think he does. So that is... Uh, kind of pushing him into Archons only. I think a couple of Storms would really clean up Drone Rush's army and give HaHa -Ha the uh, push potential he needs to actually end this game. But he's going to double down and continue building some more robotics facilities, wanting to continue his Immortal production. Looks like these Zealots are going to try to find the opportunity for a run-by. Um, Drone Rush adding on planetary fortresses, so... We'll see how this turns out. Regrouping with the main army and warding off this little uh, marauder drop, is that? Yeah, I think I think you're right. Now, Rushi, what do you think of the Liberator? I see Drone Rush uh, adding on more Liberators here. Do you think uh, that unit will turn the game in his favor against all these Archons? Say that again. Sorry. Uh, the Liberators. How do you think they'll play a role in this? So I think the Liberators are going to do a good job of locking down uh, attack points, but they've got to be in position. And right now they're not assisting in this fight. Stim is going to, or Bio is going to stim backwards and deal some good damage. And the tanks were great in the cover fire here. So this army is not allowed to push in without taking some significant damage. And without the Zealots up front to uh, soak up a lot of the damage, a lot of the uh, bigger tech items are not allowed to push in without being uh, thrown away. I think Drone Rush's tank positioning here is incredible. It's really saved his butt many, many times uh, in allowing the mobile, uh, more feisty uh, ground units to. Yeah, and here we go. This is more. This is a little bit better positioning from the Liberators. Is going to actually cause. It Ha ha to rethink just pushing in blindly here. I think he could afford to uh, bump the Liberators back and oh I love this he actually forces the Archon Ball forward and the Liberators are allowed to do a little bit of damage. The tanks are going to continue firing as well but I'm not sure if this is going to be enough. Some buildings do go down a couple of those Liberators at the front are uh, eliminated and uh, yeah it's kind of forcing Drone Rush to be a little bit more mobile across the map. One Marauder drop does go across the map. It's going to deal a little bit of damage, but it does come at the cost of one of his orbital commands, and he can't afford to lose too many of those. Now, this is the moment Drone Rush wants to attack. His armor, his uh, opponent's army is significantly downsized, um, and he really wants to move. It's like 90 to 40 or something crazy like that. 
Yeah, I feel like this is the moment where Drone Rush just needs to hit the all army hotkey, unsiege everything, and just move across the map. He definitely has what he needs to push. But again, really respecting his opponent. Haha's definitely got the economy to put things together. He's got 72 workers, but he just doesn't have the production at this point. So I think a little bit uh, a little bit more unit production would do him a lot of good. Did send some probes up to the northeast corner and sees that Drone Rush has already dropped his base. And that one Marine, that hero Marine, took out like three or four probes. Unbelievable. Got tased to death. So, haha -ha is going to continue searching for more places to mine. And again, I don't think that's his issue anymore. I think he just needs to build, build, build. He's certainly got the forces. He's certainly got what he needs. I don't... Uh, he does have the upgrades. He's 3-3 on all of his uh, ground units. He just needs more of what he's got. But this bio ball, whoo, this bio ball looks a little scary. Yes, indeed, Rushy, but he's going to have to pull back if he wants to defend his base uh, on the outskirts from this impending uh, uh, Protoss push. Um, but you know what they say? Never base race a Terran. Um, he's going to... If uh, Drone Rush puts on the pressure here, he's going to have to mass recall, and I think that Drone Rush does have the army and the power to be uh, throwing this Protoss army in the trash. Yep, I think this is I think this is his moment, a, a good siege location, and uh, he's going to be able to just stem this bio ball forward. He needs to get all of it though. But you're absolutely right. We're going to see why you never want to base race a Terran. A lot of workers stuck at that base, though. He's going to lose 20 to 30 workers. Unbelievable. So Drone Rush does need to make it happen here. I think this is I think this is Drone Rush's final stand. I think with the amount of workers he just lost, he's down to 13. You can't mule your way out of that. Now, here, while the Protoss army, a portion of it is going to be sent back, and they're going to have to face the massive Terran army. Now, Drone Rush going after the important tech buildings here in the Protoss army, and they're going to engage, and the Protoss army is going to try to stop it. A drop in the main uh, really is going to put him in the, the advantage, the positional advantage that he needs. You know what they say about oh. the high ground. Yeah, I actually wish he would have taken the tanks and moved him up to the high ground, because the moment he stemmed his, arm, his bio army back, away from the tanks the zealots were able to get right on in on top of them and deal with the crucial damage they need and that's going to stop drone rush's push at least for the moment liberators are going to help secure the position but i don't think it's going to be enough to hold it down the fourth base all the way on the left did get picked off finally which is good for drone rush but I'm, I'm i'm getting nervous here oh some crucial unpowering of buildings that's going to slow haha's -ha response on this this is such a scrappy game here 23 to 14 workers but drone rush has uh, twice the army supply he just kind of has it spread out and a lot of it's still stuck back at home yeah both economy of uh the economy of both players have just tanked and it's going to take every single dime and cent to rebuild armies and structures but I think uh, in th at this point in the game, Drone Rush is really taking out that main, uh, the main tech buildings of the Protoss. So they're going to be knocked back to Stone Age. Well, and I mean, it's going completely unresponded to. And the GG, GG. is called Drone Rush takes the victory here in our best of one, playing on his off race. Drone Rush using that, that matchup knowledge. He's seen it all before. Hey, I've watched. I've watched Maru drop Zest before, and he couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> Took care of it. Here we go. Oh, well, our brackets are all messed up. Um, okay, well, how about we uh, just kind of... <laughs> Whoops. Go back, go back. Okay, on to the next matchup. Um... I think the next match we're going to be watching today is going to be uh, For the Win Cheese versus Hybrid. Are both players in the, in the matchup or in the lobby? I know, I know Cheese is.
Alright. Um, there we go. There's the invite. Now, am I leaving somebody out? Because some people forgot to check in during the, uh, during the seeding phase, or the, the tournament phase, so... Is it Lord Cranial that we need to do? I think our party's like completely full. So, um, if you are not playing, um, please and watch our stream. Um, I would appreciate that a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so Lord Cranial, do you know if Lord Cranial is here? I do not. Okay. Lord Crano is actually a, a pretty good player. So. If that is his username on StarCraft, I do not see it. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and go on <clears throat> with uh, Hybrid versus Cheese. Um, are, are we bringing Drone Rush back in? I think he, um, um, he asked me to invite. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Evening, fellas. I just wanted to introduce myself. It oh. is I, Fox McBrush. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the next matchup was meant to be for the win. Cheese versus Lord Cranial. <clears throat> is uh, Cheese here? Mm, I believe let so. me check. You guys make conversation while while I set this stuff up okay uh while you guys set this all up right i'm gonna rewrite all the names on paper like i did for my very first tournament uh, this is gonna be difficult though um you guys let, let the show commence uh, let the show go on i'll be back in a minute well here we can talk about uh talk about some recent starcraft 2 happenings we just recently had wcs montreal where we locked in our top eight WCS circuit uh, players moving on to BlizzCon. Uh, yeah. Talk to, talk to me about that, Fluffy. Any any surprises? Any excitement that you have for the top eight? It's been such a back and forth since um, all the way since the first WCS winter. Rainer, Cyril, Rainer, Cyril, maybe special thrown in there once or twice. Um, but I think uh, Rainer took two. Cyril took two. If if I'm if I'm correct, right? Yep, and then you can throw Neeb in there as well because they split up uh, WCS Winter into Europe and North America. So Neeb also considered a circuit champion this season. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Do Not Disturb. How about that? Yeah. Um, so uh, who are the eight players that are that are headed up? Do you know? Do you have so so? Yeah, the eight players uh, in. Uh, uh, descending order. So we have Cyril up at the top. No surprises. No surprises. Followed by Rainer. Uh, in third place, we had Neeb, followed by Special. Uh, for the first time going to BlizzCon, we have a Chinese player, Time, representing uh, China for the first time at BlizzCon, which is really exciting. Hero Marine coming in at number six. A laser with his electric performance at uh, GSL versus the world bumps his way into the top eight. And Showtime, rounding out our top eight spots. And this is where life got a little bit interesting if you followed some of the, uh, I'll call it drama, at WCS Montreal. Um, they walked into the round of 20, or were round of 16. The top seven spots were locked in. A laser um, advanced far enough into the tournament where he was going to have enough points to be in the top eight, which was great. The only person was Showtime. And Showtime was at the mercy of of Stefano. Stefano had to go all the way and win the whole thing. He had to beat, he would have had to beat Special. He would have had to beat Rainer. He would have had to beat Cyril. Yeah. If he would have done that, he would have gone. But fortunately for Showtime, that was too tall of a task. And Showtime was able to advance uh, by the skin of his teeth. Yeah, and I, I think if you can, if you can beat those three players in that order, um, you're, you're sitting pretty. I mean, you would have deserved to go that that much for sure. So absolutely, very yeah. very excited. Honestly, as much as I love Rainer, I really want Cyril to come and take this second WCS. He will be the second player in history, first player in history to, of course, be not be a Korean and 
and uh, and win the the tournament, the big WCS final. Um, but he will also be the second player after was it SOS? That was he took he took the BlizzCon twice. Yep, yep. He's the only currently only person to win BlizzCon more than once. And I think cyril has got a chance. I think he definitely has. Um, he definitely has the ability to do so, but it's going to come off the heels of taking down some very, very strong players. I mean, there's a lot of good Koreans playing right now that, uh, I mean, you know that they have to be studying every single replay that Serral puts out through these tournaments, and uh, WCS Fall is going to be no exception. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where Serral and Rainer line up against each other in the brackets. I wonder if they're going to get placed on the same side or if there's going to be a potential to see, maybe if the cards align, could we have a Cero Rainer finals at BlizzCon? I certainly hope so, and that's my bet. But let's gonna be, uh, we're going to be jumping into the second game here. It's going to be For the Win Cheese versus Hybrid. All right, are our gentlemen ready? Okay, um, also... Let's do this. Ah, yes. Um, so, so I think you said stats, may, and maybe I misheard. Uh, it's SOS with SOS. Uh, two, yes, two yes. BlizzCon titles. I think you said stats by accident. Okay. Well, it, it's it, yeah, it's SOS because it's a uh, dollar sign O dollar sign. Absolutely. For for both of his wins. Yeah. That's a lot of money. All right. So we are headed over to Disco Bloodbath here for our next best of one. It's going to be a Terran versus Random. I know our random player is pretty pretty infamous for his random play and uh, liking to assert his dominance over his opponents. Well, we'll have to see. I'm actually not familiar with one of our opponents either and how they play, so I'll be curious to see what they have to bring to the table. I think Hybrid is a really defensive uh, Terran player, um, but he isn't afraid to dish out a little bit of... A damage to it. and for the win cheese of course as you said random play style and as reddit would say username checks out absolutely and here we are we're jumping in to our our next game our second match of the day spawning in the top left of disco bloodbath it's our yellow terran player give it up for hybrid and in the bottom right starting off with a bm no you our protoss player it's for the win cheese. How about the sportsmanship, huh, Rarashi? <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time I saw no you, and then it got immediately followed with something a little cheeky, I would at least have one dollar, as the forge has already gone down and two workers going across the map here. So I think we're going to see a little bit of that cheese that his name so carefully uh puts into place but we're gonna have an sev scout go out across the map and it is going to see the first probe now the question is going to be if that scv is going to see the second probe and it will so the first pylons do go down and he doesn't manage to get the full wall off hybrid is going to have to pull his workers here and be effective with his uh, APM and his micro to make sure that he doesn't just immediately fall down. But he cannot be indecisive with his SCVs. The SCVs do need to target down one. What? Oh, he used the thing where he can... It's a bug, not a feature. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Uses the uh, uses the empty space to push his probe through the wall. This is already looking pretty bad for hybrid. This is not a good situation. First Marine comes out, but I don't think it has what it takes to be throwing, th uh, destroying those cannons, one on the high ground, one on the low ground. And, um, man, uh, if, if, I guess he throws down a bunker to be doing that, but at that point, um, you might as well just <laughs> go somewhere else. I mean, the bunker's nice, but if you don't have units to put inside of it, it's not going to be very effective. Another barracks is going to get built off into the left 
out of cannon fire range for now, but these cannons, if they go uncontested, I mean, this is going to get really dicey for hybrid. And the gateway finishes. He's probably going to be pushing out some sort of unit to help ward off the Marines from those uh, rooted cannons. The first uh, bunker goes down, didn't lift it up in time. Um, this is scary for hybrid. He's supply blocked. And he's got some depots queued up. I mean, he really needs, yeah, I was going to say, he's got to get those other workers over there to help with those depots. Otherwise, it's not going to matter. The barracks is just about complete here, and a couple of Marines is going to stave off the attack for now. But it'd be very easy for uh, Cheese to just take a pylon down onto the southeast side of the base and slowly start working towards that second gas. Um, second gateway is actually going to finish up here, and two stalkers are going to pop out and start causing more and more havoc, along with the shield battery to help keep them nice and refreshed. But back at home, he's got a full wall off. He's happily mining for the wind cheese is in a good place. And for the wind cheese is slowly choking the life out of our Terran player. Orbital goes down. Another barracks goes down. Um, and these two stalkers are just going to pick away at the mineral line at their heart's content. There's a shield battery, and that really is an indication that our Terran player is in a poor, poor position at the very best. Yep, and and now starting to just pull completely off. So there's absolutely no mining happening here. And I'm not quite sure what Hybrid wants to accomplish here if he's not going to be able to mine. Uh, a couple more Marines are going to come out just slowly but surely, but the the stalkers are coming out two by two and eventually he's gonna have enough stalkers just to be able to kill that bunker and uh just be done with it and i don't i don't know what the what the command center is doing over there but you know what it works all right yeah this is pretty some pretty dire straits here for hybrid he doesn't have the production he needs to make this happen and as these stalkers leap forward, they pick off more workers one at a time until he's just not going to have enough to be able to heal this bunker. This bunker is going to be threatened here. The healing is going down. But, ooh, okay, so it is going to hang on for now. One stalker does get picked off, so that's actually pretty good for hybrid. But it's a small step in comparison to the mountain that he has to continue to climb here. And more and more workers continue to fall. Off. Now he's shooting away at the supply depots, and um, for the wind cheese, he's just uh, he's just making more more things. He's just making more things, of course. Yep, he's just gonna continue pushing out towards the west side of Hybrid's main, which I don't even know if I can call it Hybrid's main anymore. I think I think for the wind cheese has as many buildings, if not more, than Hybrid. Cheese has just moved himself in. Yeah, and and in in a situation like this, you really want to get your priorities straight because if you start wasting money on things that are luxuries at this point in the game rather than necessities, um, you're just gonna fall down. Um, so I would recommend Hybrid just float away, or he should have been floating away earlier. Because these stalkers are gonna be relentless. GG. For the win, Cheese GG is on. called. Absolutely. Living up to his namesake. All right. Let us move on to the next match. Uh, Fourth Wind Cheese moves up, and he's going to be facing Trone Rush in the semifinals. Uh, hi, guys. <clears throat> okay. Hold on. I still have food in my mouth. Give me a second. Okay, so are we going to have Zer versus um, whoever's coming up next? Zer versus Fox? Uh, no, uh, I wrote down the the players on mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. So it's completely different because I couldn't remember the link. Okay. But, uh, but it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I, I, I did it according to the games we've had so far. Okay. So right now it's going to be um, Cobble versus Lord Cranial. Okay, is he here? Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, and then after, and then after that, it's going to be me versus Captain Awu, and Lord Cranial will get to co-cast if that's okay. 
All right, that sounds like a plan. Thank you for playing hybrid. Um, let me. So who's your, who's your next game? Who are we coming up next? Oh yeah, so call uh, Cobble, are you there? No, he's just messaged me. Um, cool. Now Lord Cranial is actually um. He is. Don't know where he is. He's idle. <laughs> it's fine. He's playing, I think. Um, I just toasted some bread in the morning and realized I left it there in the afternoon. And then I was like, ah, oh, I should eat this. So I try making a sandwich for myself. And I've never had more stale bread in my life ever before. It was really hard to swallow. <laughs> anyway, um, Cranial, let me invite him. Where's Cranial? There, there he is. Ah, he's rocking the Nova portrait. My man, I know how he's like. Okay, he's joined. <clears throat> Start a custom. Okay, I'll, I'll just be uh, I'll just be scouting the game. Fox, you can cash with Rushy. Oh, nice. So, how are you, Rushy? You good? I'm doing wonderful. How about you? Nice. I'm doing brilliant. So, how's uh, how's your, how's uh, I don't know work? What do you do for your free time? Well, um, <laughs> so you're seeing what I do with my free time here, um, but, <laughs> Good uh, but no, I, I'm a high school band teacher. I recently just took a new job at a school about three to four size times the size that I'm, uh, taught at last year. So oh, nice. it's a fun job, fun job. I've been putting in about 12 to 14 hour days, uh, pretty Damn consistently it. for the last three weeks. So nice. man. how are the kids? Oh, the kids are great. Kids are, kids are awesome. They're a lot of that fun to work fun. with. We have, um, we have homecoming next week, so we have a lot of performances as we get ready for our uh, football game next Friday. Dude, that's even more fun. I, you know, oh, this makes me nostalgic about secondary school. I mean, sorry, high school for you guys. I don't know why, but in London, and in London specifically, you have um, secondary school. You call you call high school secondary school. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like somewhere in the north of, of England, someone's calling it high school. And then when he would talk about it, I'd be like, uh, excuse me, are you not British? And he's like, what? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> I'm as English as they get. I, like, I can't impersonate a Geordie accent, but if I could, that's how he'd sound like. And like, <laughs> we were just got a conversation about how the world is so different on the other side. <laughs> Northerners are so... Are so I know crass sometimes, and then like Southerners are, so, are the refined folk. Oh yes, hello, <laughs> hello indeed. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> should we uh, introduce the players? So, do you know any of them? Just uh, off the chance. I, I actually don't. I don't know either of these two players. Oh, okay, so um, let me just fill you in with couple. So he likes to cheese gold players, you know, <laughs> the, uh, the tyrant that he is. I I hate when he does it, and I feel like making a YouTube video of of like. Of a poor victim being chased by a, an effigy of cheese, you know, and then, <laughs> and then, like in the end, it was just like fade to text, French cuisine, never once. Oh. For context, he is French. I <laughs> see, I see. Yeah, oh, and he and... spawned, and he spawned in the top left-hand corner of Winter's Gate. Is our blue tri Plotros player? Give it up for Cobblestone. I would yell you woo, but like I just don't have the enthusiasm today. Uh, Lord Cranial, he is a legend in this in this game. Like, I want to say he can beat GMs, but he can't. Oh. <laughs> just know that he's a legend in this game. <laughs> he's, he's really good. I, I love him. He plays well. And he's our green Terran spawning in the t the bottom right of our map. Indeed, he is. Anyway, um, when I've been playing Terran recently, right? I always mm -hmm. feel like it's it feels slow. I'm gonna be honest. And like when you play bio, it feel like yeah, you, it's kind of like a fix for your feeling like when you play slow. Oh, My main okay. problem though is that your units don't come out immediately, unlike Protoss or like uh, what was the other one? Zerk. That's my main. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, I, I'd tell you that there were a lot to memorize, but you know, three's not that big a number. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. But I mean, like, <laughs> actually, I have no excuse. Anyway, <laughs> right now, like Lord Cranial tried scouting out something and actually found nothing except for a cybernetic score. I would say that means a lot, but it means actually nothing because, like, 
why wouldn't you go up um, cybernetics core? Oh my god, my favorite move. Okay, couple. Couple is this thing, right? Where he goes double robo, and then he does that weird pro move, pro gamer move, where you like drop micro with an immortal. And the fact that he's timing it, he do it so entertaining. I remember he showed me a ladder match where he actually did that, and I was like, oh my god! Sorry, it's just such a, so well played sometimes. Right now, Lord Cranial using the Reaper to take out a couple of probes, and then he gets one. Oof, feels bad. But you never well, take a probe from Cobble. Well, and I think it's interesting because uh, Cobble was uh, initially showing at his natural that he was going to go into a uh, second base expand. But then, absolutely right, as the Reaper kind of pushes away and sees, oh, this is going to be pretty normal, all of a sudden uh, cancels the pylon that's building, and it goes right into that double Robo Bay facility. So one... One immortal on the way out doesn't quite have enough resources to start the second one, but he's got two stalkers as well, and I think those are just oh the wall prison boys. The... It's coming. <laughs> okay, this, get get amazed for this good mic. Actually, I hope he does a good micro. Sometimes he's just lazy and he just plots them down because the drop is good enough. But I mean, this is a di diamond versus diamond. What rank are you, Rushy? I am uh, right at the top of diamond one. Oh, damn. Okay, that's actually kind of good. Uh. Are you Russian? I am not. I'm that's from really the important. the wonderful United States of America. <laughs> okay, that's 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 better. Uh, yeah, I, I approve. You have my <laughs> fox seal of approval. All right. Oh, the nice. The, uh, so what the I think is interesting here is uh, Cranial has been going into Widow Mines, which could be a really really strong counter against this Warp Prism. <laughs> All the Warp Prism <laughs> needs to do is fly into the wrong corner of the the base. And all of a sudden, it just kind of gets chunked away. And either you find yourself with a really weak warp prism that can't do a lot of juggle micro, or you just accidentally kill it in all of your cargo. And at that yeah. point, it's GG. Yeah, oh my god. Oh, the warp prism so close to the widow mine. And Cobble doesn't even notice a thing. He's going for the barracks right now. And, and the barracks gets lifted up and put put into the natural. The observer comes in and it's going to see this widow mine. He sees the widow mine. The widow mine goes off. Oh, god. Sorry, That's exactly that. what I'm talking about now. So now that. <laughs> Warp Prism is incredibly damaged. It, it can't afford to juggle right now. So it's going to go out to the third base location and start warping in some units. And I think that's going to be where this push begins to go. The Immortal is going to chunk away at all of these workers. Holy cow, I'm surprised at how... Uh, I can't... I, I just... I'm kind of surprised at what I'm seeing here. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's really dangerous here. He's got an entirely full... War Prism that's just kind of sitting there doing nothing. Okay, now he decides to head up into the main base. Uh, okay, Liberator is going to be able to shut oh this down. Oh my god, though. this is this is like a game of cat and mouse, except except Cobble's got the high ground, <laughs> not the high ground, just the advantage. Because look, watch this micro as he picks up every single immortal before it goes down too far uh, too far down in health. I don't know why he's stopping his aggression because this looks fun to like stay in, but I but it's I mean it's well played, dude. It's well played. He got some damage done, and if we just go click Shift L. We see that he actually took out a couple, uh, one SUV, two Marines, damaged a barracks that that hopefully will get repaired. Um, a widow mine and an, and two Marines. That was did I repeat two Marines? I think I did. Whatever. Oh, he's coming back now for more damage because he's he two Marines is not enough, and he gets a cancel from. Okay, that was a bit of an overreaction by Lord Cran Cranial. He didn't need to cancel that, and. What was it? Repairing those, uh, repairing that siege tank means that Cobble's aggression has been shut down. Well, well he had to make sure to... for him, I can see a pylon in the third. So hopefully, if he does a two base all in, maybe we'll see a win from Cobble. Well, he had to make sure to stop his aggression earlier because of the Liberator. If the Liberator wasn't uh, being sieged. I hope he's going to try and get more damage done with this. Yeah, indeed. Immortal the drop. Tank. But the God. but the Warp Prism is not strong enough to withstand too many shots there. A couple of, couple of quick hits off of the Liberator in unseized mode would just take out all of the aggression. It would just shut it down completely. So he did need to back off there. And I think it was the right choice. Behind it, though, he does manage to expand and move. But Cranial has actually been very aggressive on his SEV production during this attack. He's sitting with 47 workers. He has a healthy supply of mules dropping as well. And he's getting into Marauders to uh, really kind of push back the immortal count of Cobblestone. Cobblestone's going to have to do a little bit more if he's going to want to continue advancing in this game. Because right now the supply doesn't lie and he's slowly slipping behind. Oh, I just realized something. Why? Whoa, whoa, that's a... What's with the big deficit? <laughs> oh well. 
That's a huge debt. 20 workers behind and 10 armies supply behind. What? Scobble's gonna be my champion. What? Okay, he's trying to do some more drop micro against Marines, but I highly doubt that's a good idea. And then, <laughs> I mean, he's trying. He takes out a Marine, and there's three more on the way. No, there's a couple of Marauders behind that. So I was using his vision. And the Marines are gonna shut down this war prism. Take out the Immortals now. You're not gonna survive. Oh, the stim wears off. Maybe he can live. Yes, he does. Okay, no, he's been stimmed again. <laughs> Please get out of the <laughs> Yeah, okay, good. Now he he retreats back to the main army and hope oh, just put down put down the immortals. Thank you. Thank you so much. As if you can hear me. The disruptor's out. The disruptor boy. The boily boy. I love that boy. And right now, the Marine Marauder is outside of the natural. I would say Cobble, if you if he does know this is this is here, shut it out. Get out get rid of it. It's frightening. Okay. <laughs> Nice to see he cancels his own disruptor, and the the drop is going directly into his main. If Cobble figures this out, though, he's maybe he could do something about it. Then again, Poros has mask recall, so I don't know. What about you, Rushi? What do you think? How how that well how well that? I think the recall is going to be useful here if he decides to use it. He does have to make a decision, though. Yep, he did. It well, he did recall, or his units disappeared. Yeah, oh, they recalled into the natural. <laughs> so, a little bit of nice. a misclick there. So, he's going to get a lot of buildings picked off there. I don't think he killed anything super valuable. Did take out some pylons, but uh, those are easily rebuilt. Uh, a couple Indeed. more gateways going down as well. But Cranial's continuing just to uh, follow the Day 9 tradition. Went ahead, get more ahead. So, he's continuing yeah, to build indeed. workers up to 64. And uh, just, yeah. Ex expounding on his lead i think the disruptors have a lot of potential here for cobblestone if he's very very good with them and if cranial is not entirely up on his micro but right now uh, cobblestone still has a lot to uh, oh my god do dude here. the oh the side what was that called again that's the robotics bay the robotics bay just went down and the next ro ro robot and the, the thingy that you can't produce more immortals <laughs> ah yeah so the, so the <laughs> yeah, robotics this... bay yeah, this drop in the main is doing great damage. It took out Pylon and it's going to go in th through the mineral line. Luckily, there's no workers there, and for some random reason, they've been rallied into the main fight. <laughs> Let's see some real action, boys. He pulls the boys in and takes out... Okay, Lord Cranus is taking out the main uh, main nexus for Cobble. And right now, with the disruptor shots, I feel like this is his all-in move. The Marines and Marauders get stimmed out of the way, and Cobble, just do something. <laughs> <laughs> Make a final heart. Okay, so Cobble's made a hidden base while he goes for this all-in attack. Just look at this mineral line war. But in a slow zone, that's a horrible decision to choose. He should go for the attack move now, and he goes with the siege tanks. The siege tanks are being overrun by freaking probes. Oh my god, he's taking out all three of the siege tanks. He's got two immortals left in a dream. Oh, oh prism. Come on, no, he loses them all. <laughs> okay, we GG. Well played by Cobble. Ah. Uh, our champion, our French champion. Oh god, that was that was a good game. GG, man, GG. All right, what's our next match? Our next match. Let's quickly take out the paper again. Where did the paper go? <sighs> okay, it's gonna be Lord Cranial. No, no, it's gonna be me versus Captain Owu. So someone's gonna have to co-cast with Lord Cranial. <clears throat> um, I can I can cast with Rushi if that's okay. Uh, I promised uh, Lord Cranial if he could co-cast. Is there another game you can co-cast in? Um, yeah, he can he can co-cast in the semifinals because I need to actually can't stay here much longer. Uh, Rushi, you said you had to leave sometime. Okay, all right. Uh, how how many how many more matches do we have? I think it's we have one, two, three, four, like four more matches. Yeah, four more matches. I'm good for a little while. Right. I'm I'm good for now. All right, fantastic. Okay, cool. Nice. Um, Fluffy Waffle, of course, you, you cast and wish me luck, boys. Good luck. I need it. It's going to be... Fox. Who did he say he was going up against? A woo? Okay. I think you're right. All right. That's... Come on, OBS.
Is that Captain Undead? That was a woo. I think so. Yep. Okay. Thunderbird. I like Thunderbird. What do you think of Thunderbird? Thunderbird's kind of an interesting map, especially for Zerg, because it's got that tucked in third base with a giant uh, ramp leading into all three of the main bases. Um, I kind of like it because <clears throat> it's a big map. You can kind of spread out, but it does also enable uh, Terran and Protoss to take a lot more uh, greedier openings that allow them to wall off that large ramp and, and get up to that third base rather quick. So I agree. Um, I think it's interesting. Uh, it, it definitely provides for some really interesting games. So we are just waiting for the lobby to yes. be formed right now. We've got one person. One person that needs to... There we go. It's almost like they heard me talking about him. Here we go. Uh, let's get you referee. Um... All right. You guys want to see a French flag? There we go. French flag. <laughs> uh, referee. Are you a referee, Rushy? All right, let's do this. All righty. That sounds means we're we're loading in. Now this is a Zerg versus Terran, which is arguably um, the best matchup in the game. Um, of course, uh, I say that with a lot of bias because I, I play Terran, but um, um, it's a uh, it's gonna be a fun a fun situation. Yeah, I think we'll see some uh, some interesting strategies here. Kind of like what I talked about. I'd be curious to see how Captain Undead handles that pocket third base uh, to utilize the the map size to its advantage. Yeah, uh, third base pockets are, are very nice. I, I like to I like to just play macro in general, and uh, an easy third base means that we can get to a bigger army relatively quicker. So, what's your preferred uh, composition right now against Zerg? Um, I like just playing bio, uh, bio and siege tank support. Um, just classic right. type sc scrappy kind of game. Um, occasionally, I will, you know, I'll open Hellions and come into Cyclones, but here we are in the game. All right. Spawning in the bottom right-hand corner of Thunderbird. This is our red Zerg player. Give it up for Fox McBrush. And in the top left corner, playing with the pink SEVs, give it up to the, for the illustrious Awu, a.k.a. Captain Undead. Well, I think we might want to check the overlay. Oh, yeah. Oh. Look at that. I forgot. Uh, da, 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 da. Nope. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The overlay into <laughs> itself. Into the bracket. Here we are. Into the game. Just like we drew, drew it up. Oh. Uh, Funny in the bottom right-hand corner is our red sword player. Get it for a Foxman brush. And in the top left-hand corner is a Terran playing SCVs, blah, 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 blah. It's Captain Undead. Excellent. Excellent work, Rush. Ah. Uh. Thank you so much. So, um, scouting is really important on this map, and I see Captain Undead taking full advantage of that ideology. Moving his... Uh, oh, so he's actually... Ah, ha, ha, I like this. So, yeah, taking full advantage of the map in itself. So he actually uses a Supply Depot scout to move across the map to check to make sure that he's not being 13-pooled, uh, which is not the case. Uh Foxman's Brush decided to open up a pretty standard going into Hatch Gas Pool. But Undead taking advantage of that map size and goes Command Center first. How do you feel about that? Yeah, um, that's, uh, that's kind of not, that's kind of unorthodox. Uh, I don't know. Uh, orbital, orbital, orbital. Um,. Well, the delay on the orbital is going to be a long ways off since that barracks isn't going to complete. 
right. for about another 10 seconds or so. But it, think about the potential for SCV production. If he can get um, his second and third base up and running a little bit quicker, I mean, he's not as susceptible to lings running through, uh, jumping in on the natural base. He doesn't have to drop the bunker right away. He doesn't want to go into a second barracks, though. So looking to be a 2 one one so far, which I'd say is... You know, honestly, fine for the greedy playstyle he wants to get. And then it's going to expound upon his ability to get mules because he can get that second orbital up right away. I, I kind of like this. I like this from Captain Undead. Yeah, this this will give him a, a arguably more fun playstyle out, out, uh, out of Fox here, who, interestingly enough, um, doesn't have Zergling speed. Don't know why. Nope, he's going right into roaches, so he's already started that roach war in production. This is going to be a roach timing where you just skip the speed all the way entirely, and you bank up that gas so he can get as many roaches out as possible. So you can see that he's left a lot of room in his supply. I wouldn't be surprised to see six to seven roaches just immediately pop out. And he starts with two. We'll see if he, as he gets more larva, if more and more are on the way. But I imagine this is going to be just a nice roach timing. Now this hurts, he hasn't rallied his SCVs uh, into the mineral line, but um, maybe, maybe he can do that. This SCV will kind of pop out there, not doing anything. It's like Brood Wars again, you know. Wait, are you telling me this isn't Brood War? Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. It isn't? Man, I just thought Remastered looks so good. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Uh... Hmm. So, where I liked Fox's idea of jumping right into roaches, not super thrilled with the choice of a third base expansion and going into lair. He's really kind of set himself behind going into that early tech, doubling up on his gas. I'd really love to see him get more of those probes on to uh, mineral lines to really build things up. But he's going to come in here with a Zergling scout that scouts that there's a bunker. No, this it's third uh, base goes down. Yeah, it's um, what is it? Forty workers for Zerg before you really want to start teching up into anything, especially roaches. Or, uh, yeah, layer. absolutely. Uh, I think I think it's super important to get those uh, first two bases completely saturated with minerals before you start uh, adding on that second gas. Otherwise, you just get a little too gas saturated. You can take a look. He's constantly spending his minerals down, which is great, but he's sitting with five hundred gas that he just can't dump into anything specific. I think the most he just spent now was 75 going into his overlord speed. No, I like this wall off. It's going to um it's going to help him defend against the incoming roach push. Um I was trying to make it an encroaching pun, but that's a, that, that that didn't work out too well. Dun 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 dun. dun. Got that covered for you. There we go. Zergling's going to scout that there's no third base. And again, another thing. I mean, we, we went and rushed that second base out so fast. I'm surprised the third base isn't only coming up now at a, what I'd call a normal, normal timing. Siege tank is going to siege up right behind the wall and kind of reinforce this position. I think third base is going to be able to float over, though. And here comes nine roaches. Here comes the push I was looking for here about a minute ago. Yeah, it, I mean, Fox's uh, window of opportunity to do damage on this uh, siege tank line and marine line has really passed, you know, significantly. Um, the best he can do is probably hope for this third base to come in, but once once the Terran gets mules mining on this, they ramp up production, uh, you're going to be on the defense. Well, he has an opportunity here where he could uh, open up his supply and just morph uh, four or five of those roaches into Ravagers. That would chunk down to the tank enough at where he'd be able to kill it. Ooh, but he is going to take the workers and kind of tear down this line, but isn't really thoughtful about how he does that. And only one of those workers could actually harvest. Oh, so, boy. Great idea. Just not quite the execution he was looking for. And I would just love to see... Yeah, he's got the gas for it. He's got the gas for four or five uh, Ravagers right here. I'd love to see those just morph on in and deal a lot of damage to the siege units of a, a Woo, but unfortunately not today. Decides to dump it into Hydras. Let's see if Woo sees this coming. Uh, he's going to be moving out, but he really <clears throat> is focusing on his economy right now, and you can see that because he's ahead of Frox McBrush. Um... Uh, 
for a little while. Now it looks like Fox is uh, is rotating back down. Looks like his plan didn't work. So. Well, and the Marine scouts all all of those roaches kind of pulled there. So he, yep, Awu's gonna pull the br the bulk of his forces up forward here. There's a ravager. Now he decides to get those ravagers. There we go. It's like delayed reaction, yeah. So he's got some good ideas here. Now it's just going to be a matter of how he can execute it. But the tanks do get pulled forward and siege up. The Overseer ooh, is not going to be able to sneak out in time. Does see that the bio is pushed forward, so he does have to be careful. And still just not quite connecting with the the mining of those minerals. I, again, I like the idea. Um, the execution is just a little, little not quite there. But he has managed to saturate, oh, well, most of his bases. He's got an oversaturation at his third, and he can transfer some of those over to the natural. But at least his drone count is uh, even with the Terran, 58 apiece. And he does have a little bit of an army lead. Now, ideally, um, as a Zerg player, I think that you want to be having, what is it, 80 or 90 drones, something along those lines yep, at you, this point in the game? Mostly, you want to at least be one base ahead of the Terran in terms of supplies so right and so he should have about 22 more which would be around 80 yeah and look at all these mines just let's what's that one two three four five that's six mules just mining on this third base that's an influx of economy for for captain of dead looks like he's gonna double down on this uh bringing the bringing the drones along mining those minerals now uh captain Wu, captain undead he he's not spending his minerals which is something something scary look at that 2.2k banked up already Oh no, oh no, what that move command. Massacre. That was an unfortunate move command into uh, a Wu's army, and it just absolutely decimated all those roaches and hydras. He still has a, a good handful back at home, but all of that supply lead he had just unfortunately vanished. Wow, I... Mm, usually you want... Uh, in a state like this, um, usually I would be scared of... Banelings, but since Fox, Fox doesn't have some, I would I would just go ahead and push. We could win this. Ooh, does get a nice pick off with a couple of those biles. So a few of those medevacs with a lot of energy goes down. Tanks are going to siege up. Fox needs to back off here. He cannot handle this all by himself. The tanks have the high ground and unfortunately gets a wraparound with the other set of Marines and all of his units go in to the ground. And this is going to be a, a pretty tricky hold for his fourth base. And it looks like a Wu has been uh, something, something just turned on his mind. He's going, go, go, go. His army rallying across the map. He is smelling blood in the water and he wants to end this. Yeah, Fox is in a really rough position here. He's got 13 Hydralis on the way, which would be good uh, against maybe a more mech focused army but with a lot of bio and a lot of tanks these hydras just don't have the muscle that they need to survive and kill off the large number of bio that are moving quickly into fox's natural here he really could use some banelings to help uh, even this up zerglings on the way 14 it's gonna help but he's still got a long ways to go i think he's supply block oh gg <laughs> There we go. All right, that was pretty good. And Captain Undead moves on to be facing, I believe, Drone? No, some, somebody, somebody. Lord Cranial, I think. That was pretty good. That, that was a solid game. Now, um, I'm gonna go dark for a minute. Don't worry, I'll be, uh, I'll still be observing, but um, I will be less, less active in the voice chat. So um, have fun. All right, thank you so much. All right, you're the, you're the team leader. Make sure this Russian guy. Uh, hello. Is, sure Am I on stream? And, yeah, I believe you are. And, and, and uh, to that game. game. It felt good at certain points when I was trying to like you know go through the mineral line, and then I was completely denied that like a baby being taken away from its sweets. Ugh. Oh well. Well played by Captain Owen. Well played. Um. So the Lord will be facing Zer, and then after that it will be Drone Rush versus for the Wind Cheese. Um, Lord Cranial, are you here? Let me just message Lord Cranial. 
Hello. Hello, friend. Um, Fluffy Waffle, could you also give me Party League? So I could start setting up these matches. Seeing that you're not going to be here for long. <clears throat> hmm. It was a good match. It was a good game. Good game. Did GG's. So, Rashi, how do you think I played? I think there was a lot of good uh, strategy things that I saw you going for that I really liked. Yeah. I think if you continue to work on the timing of those strategies, I think you were going to see a lot of great improvement really fast. Hopefully, hopefully, you know. It's like, I don't know. How does that song go? Build it faster, stronger, makes us something. Everybody loves the Daft Punk classic, <laughs> work it harder, something stronger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if only those are the real lyrics. Um, hold on. It's not going to be Lord Cranial versus Drone Rush. It's going to be Lord Cranial versus Zer. Zer as, as well. I need to actually see if he's in the party. Zer, are you here? He's not. Okay. Yeah, Fluffy, you're going to really have to make me party lead. <clears throat> God. I feel like stretching after, like, a match like that. Do you ever just... You need to stretch. And, like... Oh, absolutely. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Uh, like, I feel like... After the thing is, I'm one of those players that are new to StarCraft. Uh, Google the Day Nine VOD and then thinks he's a pro player. But <laughs> I feel like <laughs> with enough practice, maybe those VODs could actually translate it to real skill. I don't know. All right, let's get Zero involved. Um, what about you? How's the ladder been for you? So I haven't played ladder in about a month and a half, uh, just with oh. my. With my uh, job busyness, but uh, I, I try and keep fresh with a friend uh, playing two v twos, and we went on oh. like a six and one streak last night and pushed into masters for two v twos, which feels good. Um, yeah, it yeah, must. I what I like about uh, the recent changes uh, for Zerg are the Overlord speed. Oh yeah. Timings. Now with it being oh, seventy five, yeah. seventy five, I yeah. am enjoying adding that into the beginning of most of my build orders. Yeah. I feel like it helps me scout a lot more consistently. Yeah, because for me now the money is so that it's just cheap enough for like noobs just simply buy it because it's available for you and i'm like oh my god this is amazing because <laughs> like a hundred hundred is like an extra roach and so sometimes i just i prioritize an extra roach over. No, not an extra roach, an extra hydra, I suppose. Anyway, like, I'm uh, like, I'm really excited for games. I mean, I'm really excited getting the early scout now. It, it, I'm scouting more. I feel like, I feel like I'm getting better because of those balance changes. Maybe I am better. <laughs> I don't know. So, the, so the best thing that. Uh you can do to improve at the game and and i'm still learning and working on this too is it's all about information and and that comes from two different angles information in the game like as you get as you scout and you start to see like oh i see this this is my response this is what i should mm. do but then yeah. also understanding like matchups and uh, going back to kind of like what you're seeing. So, okay, yeah. I, in this case, it's a, it's a Terran versus Protoss. All right, what is uh, typically a good opening strategy for my opponent? Do I need to build more Zealots because they're going to have a lot of Marines pushing through my door? Or do I need to save, uh, save up my resources, build an economy because I know, oh, it's going to be five, six, seven minutes before they can really have a sizable mm. force that can deal damage to me. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. information in those two ways that alone will do so much because there's so many people at the top of the ladder i mean there's a lot of players in gm where you look they have apm under 100 under 150 <laughs> you serious? so yeah so um but they just know the game well enough that they don't need to be constantly doing things as long as they're doing the right things Damn, but we are I it into our game here so we can we can continue that in just a moment spawning in the bottom yeah. right hand corner our green terran player give it up for cranial Woo! oh i was looking at Zer at the time <laughs> <laughs> so forgive me even though you probably didn't see my mistake uh <laughs> and spawning in the top left hand side of uh a good map i would say triton 
It's our Protoss player, Zer. <laughs> so, so to kind of wrap up that thought about um, players with uh, certain amounts of APM, think about uh, like Prinef, for example. Uh, Prinef mm -hmm. is a very uh, famous cannon rusher. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, APM or micro to make cannon rushing work, but it's all about information. Each map has really exploitable places for where can I drop my pylons? How can I wall? How can I wall myself in with the least amount of resources possible, and while giving my opponents the least amount of surface area to attack me? Oh, that um, reminds what, me. Rushy, yeah, that reminds me of um, for the wins cheese cheese. It was so good. Yeah. I literally leaped from my chair and I was like, "What? <laughs> he walled off the cannon with the pylons." He, sorry, he walled off the cannon with the pylons, and then in doing so, pushed out the probe. What a well-learned player, man. That was such a good moment. Anyway, continue. continue. I wanted to know. So so even on that, um, I know that uh, I I feel like For the Win Cheese has probably seen uh, some of Ayaret's coaching with Printf, where uh, mm -hmm. they kind of went through the logic of doing like a really good cannon rush. Uh, Ayaret is, uh, who is he with? He signed, I think, with Infinity Gaming. Um, a really, really good uh, guy. You should check him out on uh, YouTube, and he streams every now and again. No, but nice. uh, he took a lot of coaching from Printf and kind of talked about like what makes a good cannon rusher good. And it was a lot of mm. like the science behind where to put your buildings, how to protect yourself against uh, early aggression, and, and the defense side yeah. of that cannon rush. So okay. yeah, it's really fascinating. But again, if you look at the replay results you're gonna see apm below 100 and it's all about game knowledge all about that information damn like when you said uh, you have gms that are like below like 100 apm I was like damn oh what's worse what's, what's, what's worse is that reaper just got blocked for that stalker <laughs> <laughs> rip rip arena i mean rip pepperino oh shame he's been sent to the naughty corner not the naughty corner the for shame corner <laughs> yes, he's forced to stare at a gas geyser. Unfortunate. A bunker goes down for Lord Cranial as if he's going to get attacked immediately. But he, <laughs> I, I know Zer's playstyle. It's not, it's not that aggressive. <laughs> it's, it's actually good actually. Um, what this guy does sometimes is that he gets phoenixes to simply pick up shit like siege tanks, and I'm like, ah, oh! well played. The Reaper coming in again to see if it could shoot a pylon? Because, <laughs> like, couple, uh, not couple, sorry, uh, Cranial really hates that pylon. <laughs> uh, not just that, um, a Widow Mine goes out for defense. Are you a defensive player, or would you say you're one of those players that just macros and then attacks? So I'd say I'd probably, uh, for, for a Zerg player, I'm rather defensive. I... I have some dedicated aggression builds that I'm really comfortable doing, but for the most part, I really like to lay back and uh, kind of adapt to what my opponent's doing. So, um, lots of scouting and lots of base building. Is it is it wrong that I'm a silver one uh, random player who just loves to cheese every game and I don't even get that far? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. The, uh, look, I mean, look at what Pig does. Uh, Pig has his Sarlord account that is sitting in High Masters, and that's all he does. He just plays random and plays as cheesy and silly as possible. Yeah, I know. Random is so fun. It's because, you see, I had this dilemma a couple of weeks back where I enjoyed... I initially enjoyed Zerg, and I still love Zerg, but I ended up enjoying Terran as well. So I was like, shoot, I'll play random. And then in my random games, I only get Protoss. <laughs> it's just so annoying and inconvenient. Right now, Zer's like sort of, you know, put, putting up some pressure. Um, not visibly, of course. Uh, he is trying to. Would you call this a contain? I don't know. I'm a gold player. <laughs> and then he gets scared and runs away. Okay, he, he doesn't run away. Okay. He's trying to keep. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I feel like he just wants to try and get up into the base and see what's actually happening there, but there's not a whole lot of containing happening since right Cranial's not moving out though. into a third. But the Widow Mine drop coming down at the natural, and Zur's not responding oh. to it. <laughs> He's going to lose some, uh, some probes there. The, the uh, Widow Seven Mine on the probes. right only, <laughs> only takes out one, but the one on the left does manage to get six, which is an incredible pickup. Damn, seven probes. Feels bad, man. I like I'm not a Protoss player, but seven probes sounds like a lot for one middle one. Did, they, did that one of mine survive as well? 
<laughs> Indeed, we do for uh, for the win. God, you know, my only problem when I play silver is the fact that <clears throat> the easy way to get out of silver is to simply three off of three base saturation push, right? By by army then. <clears throat> but I don't do that in when I play random. I hmm. I specifically cheese because it's I don't know it's just really fun. Sometimes though. I play uh, macro games because I know it will happen. Like literally, n everyone plays super defensive when they vs me as a cheeser. Right now, Libre is also coming up and it's going to be cute on the main. <laughs> Poor, fully saturated Moon Online. And let's see what's going to come. Uh, come. Is a uh, Templar Archives coming up too? So the disgusting storm is going to do a lot of damage on uh, on our Terran player. The third expo has gone down too. So what's well, gone down for both players? Is six minutes a good time for a third expo? Well, with how passive both of our players have been playing, it, it could have gone down just a little bit, a little bit sooner. But uh, but I think both of our players are trying to play with a lot of respect. This liberator is actually in a good spot to kind of uh, pick away at these. Uh, oh, pick away at the stalkers. He actually had enough stalkers to kill that off, but uh, got a little nervous and cranial took the opportunity just to back away. So that liberator is going to continue to cause problems here. Uh, oh. Lining right up again, but this time it's not going to get that much damage down. Picks off yeah. one more stalker and does finally fall, but it did take a couple of workers with it. Yeah, did it? Let me just shift L. Um, whoa, 17. What have I been missing? <laughs> it took 10 workers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. Okay, well, well that happened. 10, 10 more probes died. <laughs> yep, yep. It, it's really put him kind of behind in the worker count here. So Cranial <laughs> sitting almost at 60 workers, about 20 ahead of Zor. And he also has the army supply lead. So Cranial playing really safe and just really cautious, but yeah. uh, hitting hitting Zor where it counts. Oh my god, Lord Cranial's playing like a true Zerg player, even though he mains Terran and puts Widow Mines up into entrances. Like borrowed bane links oh my god the widow mines are so close to the stalkers and the stalkers get hit okay the second oh, they didn't do much damage okay oh I, I suppose it would do more damage against zealots and sentries and that would be devastating but eh, lost one stalker i'll just build two more zealots right now a third expert goes up with a, a sort of half saturated base well, meanwhile <laughs> I, I flick over to lord cranial he's a fully saturated third dude this guy plays too well I feel like he should match up. We should match him up against some master players. What about you, Rashi? Well, Would you be willing to play in the next tournament, like next week? Uh, it, it's possible. I know my weekends start to fill up here with band stuff as we go forward, so I have mm. to take a look at that. But I, I don't think Cranial's got this locked in just yet. He's got a really strong army supply count, but Zor has exactly what he needs to stop this, and he's got a uh, Templar with Storm. So Storm finished researching, and this is going to be a good direct counter to this kind of army. If Cranial's not careful, he could just lose a bulk of his army to some, uh, two, three Storms, and it'd be taken care of. And two Storms are available, but I don't know if this army should be post pushing out. He should be staying back at home. <laughs> does get scanned. He is going to need to back up just a little bit. I think he's he just doesn't have quite enough to take out this army out on the field. Mm. You make you make storms sound like as if they're a product for a, like <laughs> from a company. <laughs> like two storms are available only for nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine? That's a bargain. <laughs> and if you call right now, a warp prison will warp in an extra Templar for that one <laughs> storm for free. <laughs> oh, it's big stim coming that. in here to the third base. And you know what? This might just snipe the base out right now. Zerd tries to do some pickup micro, but he's going to with the siege tanks, but he doesn't. Oh, he's picking. He, he's pick, okay, he picks up three. The, the zealots come in. There's no storm out for Zerd, which is unfortunate. And there are mortals are having to fight Marine Marauder, which is worse. The storm's finally got. Oh my god, that's a lot of damage. And, and the Marauder's completely shut down everything that was there. Right now, Zerd's spawning in more zealots, and those. <laughs> And those phoenixes are still still there to pick up some siege tanks, you know? I'm beginning to like Zer's playstyle. That could, that was just like... That was a marine marauder army versus the rest. I say that, but he lost all his zealots. Like, those phoenixes are such a good counter. Well played. Right now, those the tanks are really damaged. Ooh, a little too oh. far forward. Oh, the kiting. <laughs> I mean... Well, go on. <clears throat> Zor's gonna hold for now. But, uh, I mean, the supply doesn't lie. 162 to 91. And Zor's sitting without any source of uh, 
of uh, splash damage. So this bio army is just going to group up and push on in, and he might be able to stop the first couple waves of it, but I don't know if he can hold it forever. He really needs Storm again, man. Like, I, I, for a second, I just saw those Marines blink, blink out of, like, existence. He needs them. Well, I say I, he needs them. I'm just a gold player. I, I would like to see some more Storm play. Uh, right now, he's got more Observers, Zealots spawning in. Oh, no, no, wait. Those are High Templar. Finally, my boy Zer playing with Splash. <laughs> he gets scanned. Okay, and then the Marines are going to... Well, they look like they're going to attack. Okay, they do attack the High Templar. The High Templar tried to run away, turn into Archon. The, finally, the the Phoenixes go out. The Immortals come in. The Zealots... <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to see that they existed. And, and those <clears throat> that Immortal dies. But with this High Phoenix count, maybe he can, like, I don't know, harass the mineral line. Get the attention off of Lord Cranial. He pulls all the boys into the main. God, you can really tell that he has, like... Wait, where's his other base? He has 54 workers, but 48 probes in his main. I wouldn't be surprised if he had all 54 in that pile, because there were a lot of workers there. And yeah. this bio force is just going to be able to go uncontested. There's just too much there. GG is called. And Cranial continues to move on through. Moving on to the next round. Well played. Well played. My god, that guy. Oh, you know, I wasn't even expecting him to beat Cobble. And then he beat Cobble. I was like, what? What? Uh, 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 <laughs> it's just a minefield of incomprehension. I was like, I can't believe that actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my lord goes next and goes to the next round. Next will be Drone Rush versus For the Wind Cheese. <clears throat> and I think we have like, a, what, three matches left? That was unsurprisingly yeah. long. I was going to say, I think we're down to our last four players. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> For the win, cheese. Are you Are you on? Oh, also, Fluffy Waffle. Let's, uh, let's start the next game. So the next game will be Drone Rush versus, ch versus Cheese. I'll give that a moment. Anyway, have you ever reached Drone Rush? Yes. Really? How is he? He's a very good player. <laughs> I mean, like, I've leased him, and I got destroyed by him, but I want to say he's... <laughs> okay, he's actually pretty good. But I wouldn't... I feel like uh, Drone Rush is one of those players that is so casual, right? In a competitive environment that he doesn't really... Like, uh... I can see him not playing it. I mean, uh, not playing to the win. You know, he almost lost against Haha. I was like, whoa, Haha, you mad lad. And then it turns out, like, he just crushed him. But, I mean, that was fun to watch. Like, he puts on a good show. I like the fact that his calm, his calm attitude actually puts on a fun, entertaining game. Because <laughs> he might lose, and then he just breaks it in. But, yeah. I mean, how many matches have you got against uh, Drone Rush? Well, we have uh, we we played uh, a lot off and on as practice partners. So I I've never faced him on the ladder, but we've kind of played played each other here and there. Uh, mm. I don't know if I've ever counted, but it's it's quite a few. It's okay. greater than two or three. <laughs> I think I had like I just because I play random, right? I try to play random. Um, I try every race with him and then he tried almost every race with did he play protos i think he did uh whether the fact that he did or not doesn't matter i think i played about six or five games with him and in all those games <laughs> does that man know how to harass i can't <laughs> tell if he's just like deselecting his whole army hockey and then alt tabbing and you know, alt hit alting his army hockey with like an attack command and then like i'm just experiencing like two two fronts at once or if mm -hmm. he's actually just you know microing two fights at the same time i can't tell if he is because i'm only paying attention to one at a time like i i play starcraft as if it's like a checklist you know mm -hmm. suvs are they being built is army being built is the, uh, the army in check and additionally is uh what's that thing that i keep forgetting about 
supply. <laughs> Am I supply? <laughs> you know, that's just a testament to my capability. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, who's next? Who's going next? It's it's drone rush versus cheese. And I believe drone rush is away again. <laughs> Rip. Okay. Um, what we'll do is that we'll play Lord Cranial versus Captain Owen. Poor Lord Cranial. He really wanted to co cast. <laughs> and he's just playing games outright. <laughs> okay. Um, Lord Cranial versus Captain Owen. Let's try that. Oh, cheese wins? Okay, I'll put cheese in for the finals then. So we have two games left. How does that Hey, we can do that. Mm. Oh my god. That was perfect. Okay, so basically, um... Rashi, I am... I am drawing these symbols to... I don't, I don't, I'll put it in the chat as well so people know what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, so I'm drawing these symbols to signify the, the person who goes in next. And I have just made the perfect one. They're so difficult to do, and I'm so proud of myself for this. I don't know how I do it, but I met, I, I feel like a legend. God. Okay, uh, hold on. I'm just writing them for cheese in next. Alright. <clears throat> Lord Cranial, you're next. I believe Dronosh is here. Dronosh is here? Yes, yes. Uh no that's that's you. Nope. Drone Rush is in the in the party. Is he? Where He's is he? currently in the team one slot. Oh, right. I was... <laughs> okay, I just needed to look up. <laughs> Alright. Uh I suppose we'll just play this game out then. Sure. I'm excited with that. Let's go. Stop. Um, Lord Cranial, though, he wanted to co-cast. So, Lord Cranial, are you watching? Co-cast. With Russia. With Mother Russia. Join the jet channel. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> of course, we only we try to make it so there's only two people in casting, so I'll disconnect and I'll enjoy the stream. Enjoy, fellas. All right. All right. How you doing, Rushy? I'm doing wonderful. How about you? Doing pretty good. This is going to be a matchup here of two Masters level players. One of them is uh, playing not his strongest race the other one has the potential but likes to play random so uh what do you think what do you think we're gonna see in this game well i'm pretty sure we're gonna see cheese it feels like that's just that's what for the win cheese loves to do seems like it would track pretty well and well 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 should be interesting here uh let's jump in and introduce our players um oh there we go spawning in the top right hand corner of world of sleepers oh oh up oh, i think Yep, are we going to... Uh, uh, do I have the wrong one? I must. Are you... I am a little confused as to... <laughs> oh, okay, I guess uh -oh. we're just going to jump into it. <laughs> uh, spawning in the top right-hand corner, we've got for the Winchies. And spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, we have our master player, Drone Rush. And uh, I don't believe uh, um, we have Overlay. At this current moment, so we can't see what's happening across the map, but it's a drone pole um, all the way across the map. There it finally goes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is just going to be your standard drone pole against uh, SCVs. The barracks is already in production, which it yeah. could be vulnerable here, but uh, oh these SCVs do need to get pulled. Otherwise, it's immediately going to be an advantage here. Drone Rush does have one more SCV. He decides to use it in the fight 
Yeah, I'm not really sure what uh, how to play against the uh, Worker Rush, but it looks like uh, Fourth Drone Rush is playing this pretty well. He really needs to pull his SCV back or those SCVs back and repair them a little bit, or he might get overwhelmed here. Well, I definitely think he's going to be overwhelmed regardless. But the nice thing is, is Drone Rush does have a little bit of a bank here he's got 170 minerals so that's going to be able to build him three or four more workers over the course of time if he can keep them alive and fight against cheese this will be beneficial to him but he does fall one behind and he has a lot of very damaged workers yeah and those drones are going to be regenerating hp over time if he doesn't take a a decent fight soon he's like this is probably going to be gg As you did allude to, they can heal themselves, so it is possible here to get a little bit of healing done, but uh, both players just playing very, very precautiously. Uh, oh, he does do a little bit of healing, or a little bit of repairing, actually, but uh, not so much anymore. Drones do try and swoop in here. Do Ooh, they don't get a very good surround and actually get surrounded by Drone Rush, and he goes up two workers. Even just a little bit of a lead like this can make a, a big difference over time. Yeah, for the win, Cheese is losing a lot of workers, and there's not really much mining going on at home. So, if Drone Rush can hold this, he's going to be in a vastly superior position. Yeah, and it's 13 to 11, and actually, uh, for the win, Cheese doesn't have all of his workers here. He has about four or five back at his base, and uh, this is starting to look really good for Drone Rush. Yeah, I would definitely say so. Yeah, and I oh, think that the writing's going to be on the wall here uh, as Drone Rush was able to clean up the remainder of these drones. Oh, nope. I was going to say, you can take that head-on fight. And now it's down to Cheese having eight workers to Drone Rush's 11, and both of them have now just kind of basically reset the game with a worse worker count. Yeah, it looks like we're going back to Heart of the Swarm. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, interesting position that we're in. Just in terms of technology and being able to uh, advance forward, Drone Rush is in a much further spot compared to Cheese because his barracks is almost already completed. Meanwhile, Cheese hasn't even started a, a spawning pool yet. He hasn't started another hatchery. Another barracks is going to go down. So, I think this is just going to be a large marine production. I actually would almost love... If he did uh, two barracks uh, Reaper, that would actually be really devastating for the situation that Cheese is in. But Dronus doesn't necessarily know what's all behind this. He's just more concerned about getting some defenses up, and he needs them up now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another thing I would like to see is maybe a two one one uh, two Metavacs, because that that would be able to hold anything that Drone Rush or uh, for the win Cheese could throw at him. Um. But uh, two, uh, two barracks Reaper push would also be very potent. It looks like uh, Cheese is just going to go ahead and go spawning pool first. Hatchery is about to come up behind that. So I'm guessing we're going to see um, him try to push out with Lings at some point. Maybe just defensive Lings. Yeah, both players just need... They just need army at this point. They need something to anchor themselves down. Cheese decides to go for the second base. And he does go in. Uh, Drone Rush does go in with a Marine Scout here. I'm not sure that this is necessary. Especially when it just runs right on in. Oh, Drone Rush, you could be killing those those drones here. Yeah, he absolutely could. But now the Lings are out and that Marine's going to go down. Uh, looks like he's now sending a Reaper Scout out. Possibly to try and harass the... Um... The main base of for the wind cheese although uh for the wind cheese is actually sending his lings out now there's not going to be much to defend at home i was gonna say a little bit of reaper micro here and he'll actually be able to uh whittle away both of those uh, zerglings speed is now underway but no further production at this point until he can get a couple more overlords which are now in production two more lings sitting back at home will be able to Kind of fend off the Reaper, at least just for a moment or two. Queen's positioned out to help with that defense as well. 
I gotta say, I really like Drone Rush's position a lot more than I like For the Wind Cheeses right now. Uh, Drone Rush has been very consistent with his uh, worker production. That's something I'd love to see his macro play. Um, For the Wind Cheeses just now getting seven drones out, but I believe he was going to. That's only just going to put him over uh, Drone Rush's worker count, and that's not somewhere you want to be as a Zerg versus a Terran. All right, so we are going to see the tech lab go on to the factory. We're going to see some cyclones. I like this. I like oh, this yes. idea. Cyclones are incredibly strong against the early game Zerg tech. And just based off of uh, For the Wind Cheese at this point, I'm wondering if he has the micro background to be able to stand up to a strong push like a cyclone Hellion timing. Oh yeah, absolutely. He is getting a bang nest, which is going to be pretty uh, efficient versus hellbats if they do come out. Um, not so much against cyclones, because cyclones will easily be able to kite those. Baitlings are a good response, just in case there is a large amount of bio that's coming into play. But that's not going to be the case at this point. A second factory does get put down, and... There's going to continue to be more and more cyclones. I wouldn't be surprised to see a third factory get started to start working on that Hellenium production. But Magfield Accelerator is going to be uh, researched at this point. So that's going to make those cyclones attack and hit just a little bit harder. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, looks like uh, For the Wind Cheese is just going to stick with uh, Zerglings and Banelings. He's getting the centri centrifugal hooks out now. So I'm guessing he's just going to kind of stick with that tech. And, and Evo Chamber's coming out probably for plus one melee. And his third base is going to be finishing up pretty soon. Well, Speed Beans is actually a good choice in this regard. Because if the Banelings can make contact with the Cyclones, they will do a decent amount of damage. And the Hellions aren't that great against Speed Banelings any either. So... It, it is a good counter. It's a good choice. I'd love to see Roaches and Ravagers get placed out as well. The Ravagers can really outrange a lot of what the Cyclones can do comfortably. Um, but the Banelings are a good start for sure. Uh, Armory is just about to finish as well. So there will be Hellbats available. And that third base is just finishing up for Drone Rush. We're going to... So after a complete Drone Pull, we're going to see a standard game. Interesting. Yeah. So he's getting plus one carapace. What do you think about that? Uh, I think the plus one carapace can be good against units that attack really quickly. That's going to be way more valuable over time in comparison to the plus one attack, especially if Banelings are going to be his largest source of damage dealing. He wants the opportunity to be able to hit, at least make the connections with the Banelings. The Banelings are going to still do a lot of damage. And for the most part, they're going to deal lethal damage, but they need to be able to get to that army. All right, Cyclone Hellion push coming out on the field now. Looks like he's not a bit hesitant to engage on the creep. You can see all of these lings out on the field right now with that barracks. Lings are going to push oh. in here, and there's not that many Hellions. The lings do stack oh. up really nicely, though, but he is pushing before plus one is complete. He does need to be careful. Hellbats are being morphed. I think that was really poor timing. I'm afraid yeah. that too many of those Cyclones are going to go down and all the Cyclones get surrounded. And these two Cyclones are going to get picked off as well. Cyclones do not trade well against Zerglings. And Drone Rush is in a little bit of trouble. Absolutely. He has two Hellions at home now. However, against all these Banelings morphing in, they're going to easily crash into all these supply depots and then take out the Hellbats with ease. This is looking kind of bad for Drone Rush right now. Yeah, he needed a lot more Hellions uh, than he had, especially with the information that he knew that For the Wind Cheese went for a large amount of Banelings and Zerglings. The Baneling bus does get uh, the main wall taken care of at the natural. The bunker, oh, is just, oh. just one tap away, but everything's empty, so it's not really doing anything anyways. The Hellions are going to get surrounded, but not before they deal a lot of damage to these Zerglings. But more Zerglings do pour in as reinforcements, and uh, For the Wind Cheese is just kind of pushing down on the gas. He's putting Drone Rush under a lot of pressure. Yeah, absolutely. These Hellions did a really good job of, uh, well, I said 
as I say that, they get taken out, but they did a pretty good job holding. More Lings are going to come across the field. Spire is actually done, but we don't see any Mutalisk coming out of For the Wind Cheese right now. He is, he's basically all in, at, or he's all in at this point. He is bloodlusted, and he's ready to get some damage done. Yeah, and this is the right time to jump in on top of it, too. Blue Flame's not even completed yet. Smart Servos is just now uh, getting close to finishing up. So the time that he has to strike and deal lethal damage is now. The third base is still floating while these Zerglings are continuing to ravage the natural base of Drone Rush. He is going to be able to clean this up eventually, but oh, the Zerglings Ooh. almost dive into the main base and get a good scout off. But that was a lot of damage, a lot of SCVs that went down for the price. Meanwhile, Cheese has been able to move up to six bases out on the map. That's... That's a good economic lead as he's going into Mutas. Um, but at the same time, he has gotten supply blocked. He lost the Overlord there, and he's building eight more now, but that's going to delay the production of these Mutalisk. I don't think it's going to matter too much, though, because Drone Rush has no idea that they're coming out, and he's not making Thors or anything like... Or, I apologize, he just started making Thors. So he does have some idea of what's going uh, what's going to come next. Yeah, with the with the scouting barracks at the front of Cheese's base, he did get a chance to see that the Mutas were in play. So Thors are able to be started, but it's going to be difficult for him to sustain that kind of production with the economy that he has. 45 workers is not going to sustain Thors for very long. Fortunately for him, he did have a bank, and that is what helped get him on his feet. But these things are going to come in and get a lot of damage done on some of those mules. One mule does fall. Not a whole lot of worker damage this time around, so continuing to put on pressure. Meanwhile, Cheese jumps up to 64 workers, getting himself the appropriate economic lead that he needs against the Terran to continue fighting and staying in the game. Also, he's starting to work towards that hive tech, so he's technically ahead uh, tech-wise, or he's going to be ahead tech-wise here in a minute. Um, Thor's will still be a good call. Uh, against Broodlords or Ultras, or the Cyclones will probably be a better option against the Ultras. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that a lot. Um, the Hive is going to allow uh, Cheese to actually catch up on the tech. Uh, Thor's being a Tier 3 unit. he is uh, Cheese is going to be able to want to be able to uh, combat that over time with Broodlords. These Hellions are going to kind of swoop in and try and look for uh, any workers that they can roast, but there's really nothing at the 5th or 6th base. So I have to be sure not to just toss these away. The Mutas are going to fly across the map, try and get a little bit of counter-harassment done. So Beatling's being morphed in. They're not going to survive very long against these Blue Flame Hellions. Yeah, I agree. Mutas come in, but they're going to be shooed away by these missile turrets, and they're going to run right into the Thors. Moves back into the main base, and there's no missile turrets actually towards the front, which is a bit of a mistake. You usually want to have a missile turret by your add-on so they can't get picked off so easily. The Thors and Cyclones look like they're actually going to clean this up pretty well. Mm. Those those Mutalists were not microed in any way, shape, or form, and you never want to use Mutas as a main source of fighting, especially against a Terran who's got Cyclones and Thors. So he's going to toss away all of the Mutas, and... Uh, move into that greater spire unfortunately that kind of resets the count for cheese he had a sizable army lead he has, still has a sizable worker lead kind of tossed it away for some really expensive units and not a whole lot of gain yeah uh germ rush's fourth is about to come up or about to come online the planetary fortress is going to be crucial in defending that fourth bainley's come in take out a ton of supply depots but it doesn't really matter because he already had an excessive amount um it looks like Drone Rush has basically stopped for the win Cheese's uh, aggression, and he's going to have to keep. He's going to have to stay back and not be able to get much damage done. Well, I'd really love to see uh, the continuation of uh, upgrades for these mech units. He's going into plus three. I'd love to see him uh, try and get some armor as well. There's a lot of a lot of Zerglings, a lot of uh, units that will hit quickly and the ability to protect against that, especially when they have adrenal glands, which just started up on research. Uh, that could get really dicey. Ultralists are going to be a choice. Uh, oh, wait, no, that is not chitinous. That's uh, plus three carapace. That's my bad. Um, broodlords are going to be the choice of technology here. 
Yeah, he just lost both of his Thors too, so this might get a little bit uh, sketchy unless he can. Okay, so Jordan Rush or uh, Before the Wind Cheese actually cancels his Brood Lords, moves or moves the Corruptors back, and decides some more from in again. Three on the way right now, and Drone Rush doesn't have any more Thors. He has one in production right now. Yeah, but I don't think he needs him at this point. Uh, he just needs to be able to deal base damage, and that's exactly what he has access to. So this base is going to go down. Um, there is no mining happening on the uh, southeast side of the map, so this is actually a very good base to uh, go after. A couple of Hellions getting in some more harassment done, but the Queen should be able to pick those off. While the Cyclones continue to work away at everything that they can find, so lots of Overlords are being taken care of. Again, it's not devastating damage, but it is going to add up over time. But here come the Brood Lords that are going to push uh, this army away, at least for now. Yeah, more Brood Lords are being morphed in now. He's going to get to that um, unstoppable number here in a second. Ooh, lots of Zerglings get a pretty good surround, but the Hellions are able to continue roasting away and those expensive cyclones are allowed to survive you can throw away hellions to a certain degree they're way more way more uh, uh replaceable than the cyclones at this point although drone rush sitting on a nice gas bank i think he's going to want to save his gas for more thors but there's another base that's going to go down that's going to limit cheese to four bases here and he's still not able to replace any of the mining yeah, he can't. Re I mean, he does have a large gas bank, but losing these uh, cyclones is going to put him behind a little bit here. No, oh, nice little wedge. He's actually going to keep a couple of these. Wow. He's going to keep a couple of these. The brood lords are going to finally clean those up, but uh, they got way more value than they should have. <laughs> yeah, those zerglings just couldn't get the surround, and they just got picked off one by one. They queued up for death. Fifth base coming down for Drone Rush right now. Thor's in production. More Hellions coming out. He actually, he actually has a pretty fearsome, uh, hard to break army right now. If he can keep these Thor's alive, maybe put him into high impact mode. Uh, or the Wind Cheese isn't going to stand much of a chance. Yeah, I think I think Vikings need to be the next logical step uh, to add into this army composition. He's got enough to deal with the forces on the ground, but. Uh, the more brood lords that get warped in, that warped in, morphed in, uh, <laughs> exactly what you said, you're going to reach a number that's really difficult to deal with. And if he doesn't have Vikings, and they're finally four start up along with uh, flying mech uh, attack and uh, shields. I, I mean, this this is the right choice. I'm just afraid that it's a couple minutes too late. So he's going to have to really get scrappy here to kind of hold this pressure off. Well, his uh, Vikings are already in the air. He could actually, if these corruptors, uh, if these corruptors fall, his broodlords are going to be in a lot of trouble. He's already, or the um, Thor is already starting to pick some of them off. Really oh, good. Oh, this is big. Yeah, really good defense there with the uh, Hellions taking uh, shots from the broodlords. Oh, and he is going. He's going to take all of them out, I believe. He's got to be careful. There's a lot of lings on the ground that are whittling away the Thors. He can't let those Zerglings get into the base, but all the Broodlords are going to go down. Yeah, and this is exactly what Drone Rush needed. He is a, kind of held off this big push that Cheese really was kind of banking on to uh, end the game in some way. A uh, few workers do go down in the natural as more and more lings do keep slipping through. And the more economic damage he deals, the better position he puts himself in. But Drone Rush has way too many of these uh, high technology units that can very easily start pushing across the map. Oh yeah, absolutely. His army is just fierce right now. He is actually almost four thousand uh, resources ahead of uh, for the cheese or for the wind cheese. Uh, the only problem I do see here is that he has he's not he's getting infestors now, and those Vikings aren't really going to be able to do much against that and. It, does he have neural parasite? He does not. But the fungal growth will still be really good against these uh, this uh, battle mech army. They're not going to be able to retreat, and the zerglings can absolutely get a surround if they can. But everywhere else, or every other pace is just getting roasted. By I was going to say, I, <laughs> I absolutely wanted to see the Vikings landed and used in that capacity because it completely negates all of the versatility of the infestors, and that's what happens. And GG is called drone ride. GG get to move on to our finals here uh but a good game a good show here 
Absolutely. Um, real, real engaging stuff. Uh, never would have thought the game would have come this far from okay. a drone rush. All right. Hi. Um, so how was, uh, how was like the beginning of the game for you guys? <laughs> I, it's hard to cast because I never know how to cast worker plays. <laughs> yeah. It was so crazy. It's like, it's, I can't believe drone rush got drone rushed into a macro game and he still won. What? What? Okay, whatever. I know. It's just it's it's perplexing. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the next matchup will be obviously you, my lord, versus Captain Owu. Um and then after that, it's going to be Drone Rush versus whoever wins that game. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disconnect. Yeah, of course. Oh, I just realized I have to cast this game. Unless Rushy, do you want to cast by yourself? I'm okay either way. Okay, I suppose I'll cast Rudy. Oh, okay, Fluffy. It's just my friend has recently moved into his uh, student accommodation, and we're freaking out and geeky like, oh my god! <laughs> and like, we're just enjoying talking about like where we are right now. And I want to continue that. No All rush. Right. No worries. All right. All right. See ya. See you guys later, man. Enjoy, enjoy oh, the turn. Okay. That's not, that's not the map I wanted to go into. <laughs> okay. Okay. How do you like the game so far, Rushy? We've got some good stuff here. Uh, hey, keeping everybody on our toes today. Absolutely. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna make this with the game heart mod because, uh, because I. Keep forgetting. Uh oh. All right. So the next game that we are going to be playing on is, or the next map is going to be Acropolis, but it will be Lord Cranial versus a Wu. Um. Oh. Okay. People keep leaving my party. I see how it is. All right, uh, John Rush, would you, uh, are you going to stay here? I guess we can stay here. Okay. How rushy. Yes. This is a Terran versus Terran, my friend. Ooh, this is probably my least knowledgeable matchup. And more than likely, this is going to go into some long, drawn-out game where everyone's going to go, what do you think is going to be happening? And I'm like, I think they're going to build more Terran units. <laughs> probably. <laughs> And then run them into each other, and one person's units are going to die, and the other person's units are not going to die. Now, let's be honest here. I, I, I hate turn versus turn. I mean, it's, it's bad. It's a, it's a bad situation. Um, but in the bottom right corner, we have our pink Terran. This is Captain Awu. And spawning in the top left, our blue Terran. He just cast it, and now he's going to create his own destiny. This is Cranial. So, uh, I mean, now that you've got the chance to see these guys play, these guys cast, maybe how they think a little bit, uh, do you have any projections? Well, I'll be interested to see uh, if Cranial plays his TVT in the same vein that he plays his TVZ, because if he likes to play a little more reserved and a little more defensive. It would make sense that in a TVT where that type of play style is valued, uh, he'd probably double down on that and do a little bit more. And on Acropolis, I think you can get away with uh, kind of laying back and getting into that three base, four base, uh, Terran versus Terran that uh, are really kind of fun to watch. I mean, lots of tanks, lots of drops, just lots, lots of fun. And... Here we see Cranial uh, showing his hand a little bit with a second gas. Most of them were doing up uh, to a mirror build. Uh, they were doing a mirror build maybe about one minute in. Um, but looks like uh, Reapers are starting up. Orbitals are starting up. Everything's pretty much standard, standard as, as that goes. Yeah, I'll be interested to see where the gas income goes for Cranial. And it's going to go right into a factory. All right. So, so that's going to be the biggest. That's going to be the biggest jump right now. No second base, 
He's actually... Looks like... Does he want to be aggressive? This is going to be an interesting game if, if uh, Wu doesn't catch this. There's no second base. He's banking up minerals. He's banking up gas. He's got that factory. Let's see what happens. So my guess is that we're gonna we're gonna jump into a tank here. That that'd be my guess if I were a betting man. We'll have to see Reaper as well. Nope, it's gonna be a Hellion. Oh, okay. So it's gonna be Reaper Hellion. It's gonna be the uh, two Reaper two Hellion push across the map to do a lot of harassment damage, and and this is good if uh, your opponent's trying to build a lot of their buildings on the low ground. But right now, other than the natural expansion most of the buildings are at the top of the ramp so it's an easy bottleneck that can be protected because the factory is also going down as well so it'll be interesting to see what we can get accomplished here but uh the third reaper is on the way out same with the second hellion i imagine after the second hellion that he will get pushed across the map see what kind of damage he can do starport on the way for woo um, I'm wondering what he's probably pumping out of that. Maybe medevacs later onto the game. Um. Yeah, and eventually, eventually you're going to want it to be medevacs so you can move across the map. Uh, this is an easy transition into bio as well. So uh, since there's no second factory, uh, there's no major commitment into mech at this point. And bio tank is pretty standard. Yeah, uh, oh, the first tank was going to go down, but decided not to. That's the beauty of 1-1. One, one. I mean, you can choose between mech, you can choose between bio. You're not as um, you're not as restricted as the build that Cranial went into. Although, that's a lot of units. Uh, I don't know if he'll have enough to come out on top here. That's three workers that he killed. Yeah, but three workers is a pretty good exchange when your base is... Uh... Uh, your your natural base is still kind of getting established. A raven, raven coming out as well. Yeah, this is going to be kind of a potpourri of aggression here for Cranial. I wouldn't be surprised to see him just kind of regroup his forces, grab the raven as a part of his mix, and then uh, go and continue the push. More Hellions coming out for uh, Captain Awu. And it's going to be concussive shells wow, being so researched marauders. as well. Yep, so he's anticipating that uh, Cranial is going to go into that mech play, which isn't entirely the case. He's uh, pumping out Marines two at a time. I imagine once we get done with the Raven, we'll probably see a couple of medevacs come out as well. But uh, we might not get there. Captain Awu pushing across the map. Yep, and let's see what he can get done with this. Uh, there's a Cyclone and a Raven. Um, he's just going to park him here in the corner. No big deal. Oh, medevac, medevac comes here. Here it goes. Oh, the medevac, or the siege tank siege is up. Oh. Surround on the cyclones. Gonna drop that first missile turret and destroy that marine over there. But it looks like that cranial was able to hold okay. Yeah, this is actually pretty, uh, pretty deep damage that's being dealt there. It's going to be stim pack uh, as a follow-up here so no combat shield just yet it's just going to be stim for our pink terran player liberator is going to try its hardest to pick off this raven and i don't think the raven's going to have enough energy to drop another auto turret so it is possible that this could get picked off and that would be big nope uh, it's going to fly in range of the cyclone and cyclone's going to scare it away yep now uh, the liberator is going to come back on around let's see if cranial anticipates this or else he could be in a world of hurt kind of just reset here um in terms of <clears throat> our aggression here third base is being built for captain awu so he's continuing to get ahead economically which makes sense i mean he's got a good He's got a good position over on his side of the map. Uh, he didn't deal the damage that he needed to to end the game, but he did deal enough to uh, balance out the worker count and prevent uh, Cranial from just pushing back across the map. A stim pact has completed considerably earlier for uh, for a woo, and so up until um, up until I mean it's it's uh, it's Cranial who's going for. Um, or a more bio-focused build, right? So not having that upgrade is, is kind of 
kind of holding him back just a tiny bit. Um, yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised by that. I, I guess I didn't think that uh, he had a second barracks that wasn't producing Stimpak as he was pumping out those Marines with the reactor. But, I mean, that's okay. Uh, that does actually put Captain Undead in an okay position, but the supply would kind of lead us to believe that Cranial might be in a better spot. 40, 46 to 42 army supply, though, is close enough that with a couple of good hits in the right place, a couple of good tank shots, and that might actually balance really quick, but Cranial does need to hold this off. He can't be too careful oh yeah oh captain awu i don't know why you moved missed opportunities and 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 this is this is something i i i really prefer to take my um my third base over here because you've got aggression coming in from this way from the top right in the middle um from down here where as uh, this one you have a tight choke here you can just wall off you you, you have a tight choke here and you have free clear access to your natural and so um it looks like, I, I actually like this from Captain Wu, he's going to rotate to the left and see if he can establish a blockade from the third and the second base. Uh, they're going to just start zoning away, zoning each other away. But it looks like yeah, but... Cranial has gained somewhat of an economical advantage. That, that was yeah, the last thing you want to do, though, to start this engagement is take a free pot shot on a majority of your Marines, because a lot of those Marines are incredibly weak. One tank does get uh, shut down by the Raven, but the Raven uh, trades out as a price for the cost. Uh, tanks are allowed to continue firing onto the bio forces of Cranial. Meanwhile, more reinforcements do come pulling up, and the tanks are just allowed to just deal crazy damage onto each other. That Liberator, though, did get a lot of damage done on those advancing tanks. And suddenly we're kind of at a standstill here. Uh, the one tank for Captain Undead is able to continue hammering away at the supply depot. Dang, look at that Liberator. Uh, Two tank kills. Yeah, the, the Liberator did a lot of work there. Uh, Viking picking up another Raven, and Cranial's kind of losing... Uh, uh, just recklessly across the map. Captain Undead's got so many resources in the bank. He just needs to build, build, build. Yeah, and 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 as I said earlier, forming this blockade really makes it difficult for you to, you know, transfer SCVs. They'll get killed out along the way, and your your forces are being split up in half. And look at this. He's only doing this with only maybe three siege tanks and a couple SCVs. This is really, really not a good situation for Cranium. Yeah, Captain Undead is getting a lot of value out of his units here, and I, I think this is the right call. I think he's done enough damage. He's going to pull back and uh, try and reposition. Um, Cranial has managed to lock this in for now, but Captain Awu needs to swing around that top side. I don't know if he knows that fourth base exists just yet, but he doesn't want to let Cranial get too far ahead of him on the worker count or the economy because that is going to spiral out of control. And when you're up 17 workers, that makes a big difference over the course of even just five minutes. That's right. And um, you don't want to macro from behind again. So I like this uh, trying to be aggressive with a small little force, continuing to make units. Although I think Cranial has been doing a lot better with the production of units um, and not banking up as much well. <laughs> They're both banking up pretty hard right now. Yeah, this is, there's a there's a lot of action happening in this game. Uh, large Viking count is going to push back Cranial just a little bit, but these tanks are just kind of out of position here. Captain Wu is going to be able to set up on the right hand side of the third base and just wreak havoc on these workers here. Six workers already going down. Some Marines are going to push forward and try and engage, but there's just way too much here. The the Orbital Command is going to be forced to lift, but that's going to put them in range of the Vikings. I think the Vikings are going to do it. I think yep. they're going to take this out. Look at that. And that's why it's so important to have air dominance inside of a Terran versus Terran battle. Because as your ground units are are um, as your ground units are, are relatively immobile, your siege tanks, it, you know, they, they need room to, to zone safely um, once your siege tanks and your liberator zone safely. But your air units are a lot more capable of just coming in back and forth, back and forth, picking up a Viking here, picking up a Raven there. And uh, Cranial is attacking back at uh, Captain Undead's base. Yeah. A couple but of tanks here. I think he will defend for the time being. Although, that's a lot of siege tank fire. 
Okay, so that was actually a really good push yeah. for Captain Awu, but he doesn't know about the fourth base sitting up top for Cranial. Uh, he had an opportunity to do something about that base, and it just got left untouched, and a whole bunch of mules are now going to try and get Cranial jump-started back in this game. But he doesn't need minerals at this point. It's gas income where he's hurting right now. Exactly, and uh, he's going to need to take the bases primarily for the gas. His army composition is very gas heavy and and captain awu has has just spent his bank um and remember he's he's behind a little bit he was behind for a little bit you know 17 workers earlier so you're gonna have to keep that into consideration all right so it looks like the fifth well the third base location is coming under fire um and it gets picked off Now it's Captain Undead who has the Undead. I, I need to use the correct names. Captain Wu is um, is up in the economy. Huge round of mules just died. So now I Does think. It, think that, go, ahead. go ahead. No, I think that um, the correct thing for Captain Undead to do is set up. Uh, I mean, he's the aggressor right now, so he needs to set up for uh, a better engagement. Because if he takes that, um, his economy lead, his base, his overall better army composition will just um, will just take over. And and I like this um, taking this fourth base, with, uh, fourth base, and uh, and killing a lot of workers. I think that's a that's a good move for him. Yeah, but he can't just march right on in with those Marines. He is going to need to set up the Liberators first here. The Vikings are a little bit out of position, so they're not going to be able to protect right away. There's going to be a lot of free shots off on these tanks. Three tanks go down. That's actually the perfect time. Captain Awu needs a strike. That big stim forward is what he's going to need. Excellent. And he had just enough air dominance to be able to secure this. This third base is not going to stand for very long. Oh, but he's going to be careful. He's losing a lot of these Marines to tanks that have just been positioned further back. Ooh, uh, Captain Awu not taking the best engagement, but still sitting ahead about 40 supply. And never underestimate the siege tank. It really gives you uh, an upper hand in these kind of engagements. You never want to run into them if you can. Um, siege tanks will get incredible value. And it's DF, nice. That's going to be enough DPS to eventually whittle this... Uh, planetary down and with the planetary going down um it's gonna have to force him to the bottom left corner of the map to do more mining he has been aware of this and has been building more and more command centers but uh, he still hasn't really found an answer to captain undead he is gonna need to start transitioning those workers because that's a lot of lost mining time here for 20 so workers yeah and so i guess that if they're not mining then i guess it uh kind of evens out the economy and that, that's two liberators picked off that's not good yeah uh, he kind of just threw those away the marines were able to just fire freely and the captain and dead's kind of letting cranial stay in this game by giving him a slight uh worker correction and just tossing away high expensive units for free but he's still putting on a lot of pressure yeah, I really wish those workers would get to work. I mean, that's that's almost 20 workers right there, and that's the difference. I mean, 81 to 61, Captain Awu has a night uh, as a 20 worker lead, but all of those workers aren't working. Yeah, ridiculous. All right, that tank's gonna go down. A couple more of those workers are gonna get picked away. <laughs> he oh, just he just now it. realizes. <laughs> yeah, and that that is definitely gonna kickstart his economy to an extent. Um, so. I'm glad he he worked that out. Good situation. Yeah. So now this is this is a pretty decent contain if Cranial wants to expand to the right, but uh, Cranial is starting to do some work just moving down into the left. Uh, those tanks are still in range of the high ground though. These liberators should be allowed to do some work. He's got a lot more support for them coming forward. Yep. And now the bios are able to move forward, and and this is the Terran versus Terran dance where you siege up your tanks just out of range, move your liberators in to move the, your opponent's tanks, and then you move your bioforce forward. So now this should be a big push forward here where he's actually going to zone uh, Cranial out of his third and fourth base location. This is looking pretty dicey. 
man, you're, you're a wizard. It happened like right just as you said it. And it's GG. Captain Wu runs away with the victory in this amazing turn versus Terran. And it looks like he will be moving on to the finals. Yeah, so it's going to be a Terran versus Terran uh, finals here since uh, Drone Rush has been playing Terran. I will admit. I'll be curious to see how Drone Rush handles a TVT, um, where one of the Terran players is a full-time Terran player. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I think he can do it, though. I think he can. He's, he's, got, he's got the ability, and he's got the know-how. Now we have to see if he's got the execution. What is it? Cranial. All right, let's just jump right into the finals, and it looks like this lobby is getting thinner and thinner by the game. Just me, Rushy, and our two players. Terran versus Terran again. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, Drone Rush. If you if you want to play Zerg, that's uh, that's all right by uh, by Captain Wu apparently. All right. Okay, here we go. I'm excited for this matchup, Rushy. I like this. Yeah, if Drone Rush is gonna play a Zerg, I, I'm really, really excited for this. So this is our this is our last matchup of the day. A ZVT. What, what's your call? Who do you think is gonna take this? I think Drone Rush has. Uh, I, I've seen him play Zerg. It's incredible. I'm really rooting for him. But man, as a fellow Terran, I can't just wipe a Woo off the board just yet. So we'll see. Me 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 Mecrobio. I guess that's that's the question. Well, we're going to find out here soon as we take a look at this player in the bottom right-hand corner of Triton. Give it up for Captain Owu. In the top left corner, wearing the moderator's sword for the Loco TV channel, it is our blue Zerg, the illustrious Drone Rush. Overlay. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's a thing. I'm not very good at the streaming thing yet. Don't worry about it. Nah, it's okay. You're, you're killing it. You've been doing a good job today. So you've been doing a lot of casting and a lot of uh, overlay work. Uh, very well done. All right. So here's Drone Rush and here's a Woo in case you guys, you know, forgot. So um, actually, I, I, t I forgot to tell you about the prize pool. The winner um, will get a sub to Loco, but if they already have a sub to Loco, then um, they will get a sub to whoever they want. Um, All right. Or alternatively, if you don't have Discord Nitro, you will also um, you can also get Discord Nitro if you want. So. Uh, that's a pretty good, pretty good price pool yeah. for today. So, um, looks like we are going to see just a little bit more of a standard matchup between these two players. Drone Rush opting in for a hatch gas pool, Captain Undead going for just a pretty basic uh, barracks timing. Although no follow-up base well i guess that comes off of the uh, barracks worker yes. so uh, to be determined on that one i imagine that will probably still be pretty standard yep and there it goes yep. more than likely we'll see the second command center go down here shortly so not as aggressive as last game looks like he's just transitioning towards the normal terran opener um now as as a diamond a high level diamond zerg player um and drone rush is a master one right um, yes. I'd, I'd be interested in hearing your insight of just this Zerg paradigm and how, how you approach Terran in general. Um, like, you know. So I think that, so, so I think the big first step is just to take care of your economy right off of the gate. Um, the, the goal of the Zerg player is to, uh, get out in front as much as they can. So getting up to that 50, 60 drone count, uh, getting, uh, three or four bases on the, the bankroll what the Terran player needs to do is they need to slow that down as much as possible so it just starts with even that Reaper coming right into the uh, first base and seeing if they can pick off a couple of workers see if they can pick off a a uh, creep tumor just uh, to slow that 
slow down the Zerg player at all costs. He's going to scout and see if there's a third base, and he does not see a third, which could be alarming to some degree, but it's uh, not uncommon to see a third base go down a little bit later in favor of getting a couple more drones. So there goes the third drone over to make that third base. But now Drone Rush needs to spend the time. He has got to get his economy up and rolling. This third base is going to be good and get settled in, but now um, it's coming down to the Terran player to make a decision on how they want to approach. And it looks like it's going to be a 1-1-1. Mm -hmm. So moving into more than likely what will be a 16 Marine uh, push to begin with. And I think Drone Rush is going to be more than equipped to handle that. It's going to be another 30, 45 seconds before we see any tech shift. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. So it's going to... It's going to start pumping out Marines here in just a moment. Could be a Banshee opener, too, with the Tech Lab. Uh, it's going to be a Raven. Interesting. Raven. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, um, Raven would not be my first choice uh, to to be helping slow down that Zerg economy. But um, but let's see what he can get done here. That's a, Drone Rush has established uh, a pretty stalwart... Uh, map map vision or a network of, of overlords to give map vision right so he can he'll see when a woo just moves across the map and then he can just gear up for defense yeah and even just having the watchtower in the center of the map he's gonna see these uh, four hellions move out the cross and there will be a little bit of response uh, queen wise uh, a couple of spores going down. He must be worried about the potential for Banshees. And plus one melee getting started up as well. So yeah, this is going to be a pretty standard uh, Zergling Baneling opener for our blue Zerg player. He's going to try and set up here at the front. The Raven's going to be really paramount in slowing down the creep spread. So uh, being a good detector and these creep tumors are going to be shut down for the time being. I don't think that Drone Rush has enough lings to deal with this many Hellions as it is right now. But it looks like the Hellions are just going to continue being a nuisance here. Uh, more, more tech labs, more reactors here. A barracks is going down, so I don't think it's a full commitment into the Hellion push. But this is still going to be pretty scary. Drone Rush has to prepare for this. And I think it's going to be more queens and two more on the way to help zone these out while he continues to build up his uh, Ling and Bane Ling count. I think the uh, the situation or the um, the Adele situation that Captain Undead was going for by building this Raven was that he didn't have to drop extra energy for scans, which means he can just pump out mules. But really, he's gearing up production. He's not expanding, really. Um... And even, I guess, five minutes into the game, he is putting on that harass really hard. But he's, he's, he's not really getting creep. Um, he's, uh, I mean, yes, he's going on to creep, destroying it here or there, but it's not, it's not anything, uh, anything amazing. And the Raven will just return back home. And I, and I feel like if you're going to go into the Raven, you have to make a concerted effort into stopping the creep at maybe not all costs, but many costs. Because it's a, it's a large gas consumption. In the case of using scans, scans are just energy. Energy is going to build up over time. It's not going to cost him any major resources. And for the amount that he would get off of of like say a mule, mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's that big of a sacrifice. If you go the opposite way, though, if you go for the Raven, you really do need to make a concerted effort. Okay, I'm going to take this creep out. I'm going to push Drone Rush and keep him on his three bases and not let him get out to the front of the map because now Drone Rush is able to take this uh, this forward fourth base. And if he's allowed to establish it, that's actually going to give Drone Rush a lot of great positioning on the map in terms of getting to uh, Captain Wu's base. Absolutely, and and I think I think that's a that's a great analysis there, um, and. This fourth base is, I say, um, is really, you know, getting more ahead because the Terran does not have a third base ready. I don't think he even, you know, he has a third command center in here, but they're both, the locations are both being blocked by Zerglings. And so if Drum Rush gets this up and defends it, he's really going to be in good position economically. Ooh, big push comes in. Ooh, the Dorito Cannon does get a fire on all these Banelings, but the Banelings are allowed to connect before the tanks can really do anything about it. So he absolutely throws all of his army away 
And at yes. what cost? I mean, oh, the Dorito cannon does not see friend from foe, so um, you guys have to be careful about that. Like half of of a Wu's units got got Doritoed as well. Yeah, and Droners is not going to push across the map. He does need a few more banelings if he wants to bust into this natural expansion. But he's got Hydras as well, and Hydraling Bane is still rather strong against the composition that Captain Awu has gone for. But he's got to wow. have banelings in the mix. These Marines are going to be able to stutter step back and forward. Those are the world's most bravest goes. SCVs, Aww. but the one baneling is not going to be able to do enough. So these uh, Zerglings are going to be the focus here as they continue to work. Oh, they're just going to body those workers. This is actually devastating damage. This is the damage that Drone Rush was looking for. Absolutely, and look at this. It is 34 to 76 workers. Creep spread is off the charts. He's getting production buildings, workers, into the main base, continuing on that upgrade train, transitioning to Hive, transitioning to Spire, and looks like Captain Wu is calling GG. Yeah, Captain Awu unfortunately let the door open and Dr Drone Rush just piled on in. GG is called and congratulations to Drone Rush. He is the winner of today's tournament. Winner, winner. GG. GG. All right, I want to thank you, Rushy Cheerio, for casting with me, being a wonderful caster in all of the games, providing great insight and analysis. Um, we hope to have you sometime in the future. I will be contacting Drone Rush about his prize. Um, thank you, everyone, for participating in this tournament, whether you won or you lost. Um, thank you, Fox, for getting this set up, and uh, I hope we will see you next time. Absolutely. Take care, everyone. Take care.